trip five and one. They've won eight of their last nine. They find themselves a game and a half out of the sixth spot in the Western Conference. That would put them firmly in the postseason and away from the play-in game. And a final NBA note, San Diego State basketball alum Malachi Flynn dropped 50 off the bench last night for the Detroit Pistons. He is the only player to score 50 or more points, averaging fewer than five points per game in the history of the NBA. Anderson's drain stoppage guarantee solves issues for $63 or it's on the house. Nobody wants clients like they do. Anderson Plumbing Heating and Air has been privileged to serve over a half a million residential clients for more than 45 years. AndersonPHA.com. Yeah. Happy Thursday to those who celebrate Big Rich TD and Fletch with you on a Thursday morning, and all of a sudden, everything changed. <laughs> Yesterday on Getaway Day, what an outing it was for the cardiac pods as they're able to pull out a big win against a red-hot Cardinal. And I do mean red-hot. Goodness gracious. Hope springs eternal as we are uh, looking forward to longer days and warmer nights here in San Diego. It's incredible, yeah. man, how one outing, one game, all of a sudden makes a lot feel a lot better. You're fixed. Good morning. It's fixed. Yeah, good morning. Welcome in. We got TD. Uh, he's alongside me as always. Unfortunately, Fletch is laid up. Uh, we did get some positivity from him yesterday. Uh, he had the ankle surgery. He's going to make it. He survived the first hurdle, which is not dying on the operating table. So that's good. Uh, <laughs> we, uh, we did hear from him that he wasn't drugged enough. Right. So, so J Riff is going to join us today. Uh, uh, once again on Big Rich TD and Fletch. All right, um, J Riff. Yes, it's was it day three that you've been on with us? Is that this is? is that it a... feels like day three. This is only day two. <laughs> That's right. Day Can three, I just yeah. say, Rich, you said he's laid up, but I've never seen Fletch make a layup before in my life. Wow! Oh, wow! Oh, wow. So, so those are fighting words. I mean, this is an injured man. Yeah. This is a guy who's probably walking around with crutch or scooter. We don't know. I texted him. He's fine. Okay. Okay. He's walking around at all yet? Maybe. Yeah, I don't know. He was yeah. he was a little angry though because he was not at the point of um well I don't know how else to say this doped up that he wanted yeah. to be you, right he, he wanted more drugs yeah which uh who, who doesn't honestly <laughs> uh, and good for him for making that firm request with his doctor right we'll see we'll see uh, what the carryover effect is he's planning on being back in here on Monday of course before the weekends we'll have our bar cart Friday brought to you by Keg and Bottle 10 locations around San Diego tomorrow as scheduled we will still do it uh I'm going to a rodeo tonight gentlemen so Woo! I'm going to find out what that's all about reporting to you guys live from Dallas all week long so <laughs> I mean a busy week yeah it has been a busy week I don't know how you knew there was going to be so much Texas news as you uh as you went out to Texas but from well, yeah. So we started with Zeke Elliott. Yeah. Uh, Zeke Elliott, that story breaks that him and the Cowboys, you know, they're having this, I don't know if you want to call it Facebook official, but they, they may or may not consummate a relationship once more. Uh, then, of course, we have the Rasheed Rice car accident in Dallas right. that I rolled my sleeves up and I was uh, boots on the ground reporting yesterday. And then, of course, today. I've been spending most of my time in Houston, actually, covering <laughs> Stefan Diggs to the Texans. So uh, much to the chagrin of my wife, who I told to her, this is a working vacation. There has been no vacation because guess what? The news doesn't stop in Texas, baby. Yeah, that's right. That's right. It keeps rolling. I don't know what the hell's going to happen tomorrow, but uh, but yeah, there's a you know big news after big news. You want to start there? Or you want to start with the Padres and uh, and how red hot they are? No, we could start there. I, I like I I think uh, I I think I like where this is heading. I like the fact that the Texans have made uh, a major investment in their future. I think C.J. Stroud, you look at him, he had such a bright and uh, a really incredible rookie season. When you're a quarterback, I can't emphasize enough. I I've played with a lot of different quarterbacks, some great ones, some rookies, obviously, uh, guys getting their first ever snaps at the NFL level and guys who have been playing 10 plus years in the league and Super Bowl wins and all that stuff. 
And I can tell you right now, it doesn't matter where you're at in your career. It's a mind numbing amount of information that you have to synthesize, process and execute on a daily basis if you're the starting quarterback. And so for CJ Stroud to come out and have the rookie year he had, of course, the Houston Texans are like, oh, my gosh, we need to invest, invest, invest. So they go out and they get Daniil Hunter, which is an enormous pass rushing acquisition up front on their defensive line. He was a free agent from the Vikings. Um, and they already drafted Will Anderson, so they have a very competent pass rusher from the draft last year. He was the second overall pick uh, in this past year's draft. He was uh, C.J. Stroud, yeah, defensive rookie of the year. Yeah, I yeah. mean he's incredible addition there. I mean you you go down the list of acquisitions they made, trading for Joe Mixon. Like they're saying, okay, let's spend a whole boatload of, of money on making this team stronger. This way, we have a chance at making a run in the AFC. Yeah, no, without a doubt. I mean, it's uh, it's shocking that over the course of, uh, of, well, I guess a few weeks, a couple months, I guess, that all of a sudden you're going, wait a minute, Texans, who were supposed to have a down year last season, and now this year was supposed to be, you know, a rebuild season. We'll see what happens. All of a sudden you're like, yeah, I don't know the names on this team. Uh, it almost looks like they've drafted a fantasy team, and now we have to talk <laughs> to them like, like they're a Super Bowl contender, which, yeah. by the way, the Bills, all of a sudden, you're putting a lot on Josh Allen if you don't add some some pretty big names to the roster right now. Yeah, I was talking to uh, some friends yesterday. Actually, Darnay Tripp, uh, sports anchor over at NBC, uh, he and Greg Car Camarillo, after this trade went down, there was a time on Football Night in San Diego on NBC, the thing we do after Sunday nights in San Diego, where I actually said, Josh Allen is just a tight end masquerading as a quarterback. And the two of them have never let me forget that I said that. <laughs> so anytime there's Bill's news, <laughs> I get a text. And yesterday I got that text. So I'm giggling along as we're having this text message. But the truth is we're about to find out a lot about Josh Allen. Yeah. You know, yeah. He, he loses his number one receiver, Stefan Diggs, for years who – bailed him out and the bills out of a lot of tough situations he's going to make the texans better and losing him makes the bills i mean understandably worse right right and now what the bills got for him a 2025 second round pick uh yeah. this year they get a sixth round pick and then also 2025 they get a fifth round pick that doesn't feel like a ton to me it doesn't i mean i guess you can make the argument that this was really maybe a situation where a lot of teams are like, no, we'll pass on the 30 year old. Who's really going to be on the wrong side of 30 coming up this season because he's born in November. He turns 31 this upcoming season and he's a headache, you know? So as talented as he is, it's now two situations with stable quarterbacks and stable head coaches at the time. It was Zimmer in Minnesota. This time it's McDermott. Well, Zimmer and Cousins in Minnesota. This time it's McDermott and Allen in Buffalo. And he forces his way out and he wants trades. And, you know, he causes issues in the locker room. And look, these general managers talk, you know, and the Bills, they have a good reputation. And I'm sure on his way out the door, they wanted to get more draft value for him. But along the way, they probably shared some information that bit them in the butt a little bit here because. You know, Stefan Diggs is a headache. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that probably factored into why the 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 value they received in in return for this uh for this receiver wasn't wasn't quite what we would expect. Well, at the same time, uh if, if he's a headache for the Bills, he you know is a possible headache for the Texans, and the Bills have to look at Stefan Diggs and go, We're willing to take less because we want to cut bait here. Exactly. We want we want to get out from underneath this. And also the contract amount, you know, we talk about that too, and we forget about the money, but you know, there's, there's a certain amount against the cap now that any team that's willing to do this dance with the bills, they have to onboard his salary. So you're, you're dealing with a very slim few who have the draft capital to even talk to the bills who have the desire for a receiver like Stefan Diggs from a personality standpoint and from an age standpoint, and also have the money uh, the 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 room in their cap structure to onboard a player yeah. of his you know magnificent salary. So there's a lot of different factors that went against 
the Bills from receiving a lot in return. But a second rounder, listen, they could turn that into something special into the future. A fifth and the sixth, you know, don't don't turn your nose up at a six round draft pick. After all, Tom Brady was a six round draft pick. There have been plenty of low round draft picks that have made history in this league. I don't know if we're going to see the next Tom Brady drafted by the Bills, but you, you understand what I mean. It's like all of these are potential, or you could package them like the like the Bills just did, um, or excuse me, like the Texans just did, and you can ship them off somewhere else and add them to a package to get another player at some point in the future. So we'll see what happens yeah. there. But this shakes up the AFC, man. We talked about it a little bit yesterday. The Bills, it feels like their arrow is pointing down, and the Texans – their arrow is pointing up in a big way. Yeah, and you know what uh, is crazy? Stephen A. Smith brought this up yesterday on ESPN and said, out in Texas, the Dallas Cowboys aren't even the best team in the state anymore, uh, <laughs> which I, I don't know if he's wrong there. I mean, look at the Texans. They've got a, a younger quarterback. They uh, they don't have $60 million, you know, looking at the cap here, trying to pay Dak Prescott. Uh, they got to pay C.D. Lamb. They got to pay Micah Parsons. And the Houston Texans are just putting stuff together over there. It's almost like, you know, you talk about this a lot, Rich. You're playing with house money. It, you know, it's it's like, what do they got to lose? They weren't supposed to be here anyways. Let's let's see what we can do. Yeah, it's like you, all of a sudden you're in a rush to make, you know, great decisions better. As opposed to, like, for example, the Carolina Panthers. It, you know, it feels like everything's on fire because it really didn't work out with their first overall draft pick last year, Bryce Young. You know, you have a situation where uh, your rookie quarterback doesn't end up becoming what you think he's going to become. And so you start blaming people. The finger gets pointed at the head coach. You fire Frank Reich. Uh, you know, you completely dissolve his staff. And you're looking at year two in Carolina, you know, as an example against what's happening in Houston. And you say, wow, they're in the middle of making some hard decisions. Meanwhile, the Houston Texans, they just got a $300 credit to go gamble for free at the casino while they're waiting for their room to be ready. Like they, 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 it's like having a free, uh, fr a couple of free spots on the bingo card to go nuts with. And, and all you need is G seven and, uh, and you're about to walk away with, uh, uh, 1989 gr Grand it, it, Prix. Oh, man. <laughs> Fletch would have been so excited. Yeah. <laughs> Jared, yeah, qu man. quiet over here in the control no, room. I'm You're just, just soaking this all in, ordering, ordering a Texans jersey. It's funny that you say that I'm ordering something, but it, it may or may not be for a wedding that I have to go to this weekend that I forgot about. Anyways. <laughs> toaster? You getting a toaster? <laughs> no, I'm getting, I have, I have to go to this rehearsal, like luncheon on Saturday in Santa Monica, and I'm getting like a jacket. Anyways, don't worry about it. Wait, it a jacket? I probably shouldn't wait, be doing oh, this. Oh, you mean, well, wait, well, well. That's fine. You could order whatever you want on the show. You just have to talk about it. So what kind of jacket are yeah. we <laughs> what, what's, just I honest, jacket? honest to God, to both of you guys, I literally just went on Amazon and wrote nice jacket for men. <laughs> And I'm just like going through because I need something. I can't afford something expensive. I can't afford something expensive, and I need it quickly because I need to get there it by go. tomorrow. Wait, this is what I'm going to do right now, TD. Well, well, yeah. you you que continue your question of J Riff. I'm going to write nice jacket for men I'm on Amazon, same. and I'm going to try to guess which jacket that that he. See, got. I'm so wondering I'm gonna, though if the well, algorithm will bring show you different things than it shows me, knowing that our purchasing habits are different. <laughs> well, like Rich is probably going to see like $500 jackets. I'm seeing like $6 jackets. Actually, no, no, when no. I, when I typed in nice jacket for men, I got like a Columbia, like a soft shell zip up jacket. Yeah. That's, I'm that's, getting that too. There's some decent options on Amazon. Can I just hold on, say, hold on. Are you going to go like just jacket? It's going to be like Miami oh, vice style. It. You're going I jeans and a t-shirt underneath. How are okay. you rolling to this thing? J Riff, look at the screen right now because uh, we're all in separate rooms. Mm -hmm. This is the jacket that you ordered. Hang on. Oh, <laughs> with the collar <laughs> popped. <laughs> There is no are you, question. Are you only saying that? Cause the, the only one of these models that I actually somewhat look like is that one. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, and also, like, I think generally people buy things they can picture themselves wearing. Like, this guy's wearing, like, a ribbed sweater underneath. Like, this is 100% the J Riff special. Yeah. You know what? I really like this. Um, this, let's see what it's officially called. It's like a men's woven military jacket. Here, I'll show you a picture. Look okay, at this. Yeah, but that's, but 
But hold on, you're going to a wedding. You need like a, no, 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 no. Like this is this, code. this is for the Saturday lunch and the day before the wedding. So well, they going, said you, garden attire. You're gonna look like Michael Jackson Thriller <laughs> if you wear that in the garden. <laughs> okay. And by the way, what the but, hell does garden attire? Yeah, I wear a garden, garden party attire. attire. That's what it you, said. You wear a muumu and gardening gloves <laughs> like my grandma used to. <laughs> I need to go spray the tomatoes. <laughs> I just Googled garden party attire for men. Uh, on Amazon? Well, yeah, well, uh, well, well, Google. I guess. Okay, fair. Okay. They're the same thing at this point. Let's see. Easter bunny costume. We're talking. <laughs> <laughs> Easter was last uh, weekend. Slacks, Sorry. slacks, shirt, shoes, jacket. Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. It moved. It moved. What do we uh, think about like a light bomber? It says jacket or oh, blazer. Nice. Hats are optional. I would Ooh. go. I would go with the hat. I'm not. A, I'm. I'm not really a hat guy like you. Like unless I want to, don't want to do my hair in the morning, which <laughs> I'm going to Maybe for this wedding. Hat? Maybe something. Yeah. Something classy like yeah. a 1950s bowler hat. Yeah, th- I think that would be like J. Riff would pull that off well. Oh, I appreciate it. Yeah, that, that would be really good. Or maybe this is what happens fedora. when I'm on the show. I deviate. Well, not that we don't deviate, anyways. No. But no, 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 no. Wait. This is going to be fine. no, 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 fact, no. It's fine. You were. Gonna... We're going to open it up to the text line yeah. now. 70470, start your message to a team. If you want to help J. Riff find a jacket to wear, please weigh in on the text line or reach out to us on social media, Big Ritz, TD Fletch. This is super important. He has to wear garden attire this weekend, guys. Right? Now, I'm looking at pictures of people in garden party attire. No one has socks on. Oh, I don't we're going like, to I don't like, like that. This is being held at like a really nice restaurant in, in Third Street Promenade in Santa Monica. So I think we're going to be wearing socks and shoes. Swank. Well, they're shoes. They're just no socks. Oh, it's like Dockers. Well, I can pull that off. I mean, they're like uh, high water pants. Yeah, high water pants. Are they and like loafers? Are the are well, the pants so, cuffs? Some are. So, so this is like sailing. Like, like this is like bougie sailing attire. Questions. I'm going to be honest. I like a sockless loafer though. Do you, I, yeah, you do. Like, I'll throw on a dock cider and a captain's hat. I have no problem with that. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever gone sockless ever anywhere in my life. Well, you probably shouldn't. Like, why? Well, you well, don't know what my feet look like. I'll, I'll tell you what I do. They look like ham stuffed <laughs> into a pair of vans. <laughs> That's what they look like. They look at like, you take off a sock. I mean, all of a sudden it looks like you know it looks like it looks like sometimes when your infant children they get a hair wrapped around a toe and you're like we're gonna lose that toe. We're gonna lose that toe. The the circulation's all missing. They're turbid. <laughs> that is uh, that's highly accurate. That's highly um, accurate. You're listening to Big Rich TD and Fletch. Uh, if you didn't know, now you know. Yeah. Uh, and we were bumping some serious jams pre-show, so we're all oh, fired. Were you so Were you hearing that? It. Hold on. Oh my god, Lil oh, Kendrick wait. Lamar. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I didn't know if you were hearing that. I turned it up here in studio, and I had some looks of what was happening, and then. I didn't know. I didn't know what I was. Nah, Travis was bumping. It was cool. Yeah. It was Wait. Right. So this, this is this, this is, is the jacket one. you've chosen. Yeah. Well, maybe this okay, is a nice on. one. All right. I mean, that's just, this is like a shirt jacket though. This is men's casual shirt jacket, cotton linen shack. It's called a shacket. A, sh- a shirt jacket. Yeah, a shacket. Wow. I don't think it's three and a half stars. Mm-hmm. That's a no. Maybe it's a jerk. We don't know. We don't know. Listen, <laughs> a jerk. They should call it a jerk. A jerk. A jerk and jorts. <laughs> dude that's the move that, garden that's party the attire jert and jorts all right we got a pair of tickets to see social distortion today uh we're gonna be giving those out soon we also have that 50 dollars at islands another gift card to give out to our listeners today we'll be giving that out soon so uh, keep listening to the show if you want to find out how to win those uh also on the other side of halftime we got to get to this huge win for the podcast <sighs> my goodness magnificent fire historic day for one particular player in but first let's do this i see a bunch of guys playing with their technique and fundamentals it's half time all right rich what do you got for us it's like it's like we're at the crap table we just don't know <laughs> throwing the die <laughs> So check this out. This is an interesting story. Maybe we'll hit this later on, but UConn's men's basketball team was supposed to leave at 6 p.m. yesterday. They didn't end up leaving for their flight to Arizona, which is the site of the Final Four, until 1.30 in the morning Eastern time. They didn't land at Sky Harbor in Arizona in Phoenix until about 3.15 a.m. this morning local time. So Dan Hurley, the coach of the UConn Huskies, 
is going to continue to complain about how the committee is screwing him at every turn. Uh, the NCAA is currently working on a plan to make good for the Huskies with all their media obligations and practice times on the other side of this trip because they're going to be tired. They're going to be a little jet lag, no question about it. Um, let's see what else we have for you. Yeah, Malachi Flynn, you heard it in the opening update from j Riff, but he dropped 50 points last night off the bench for the Pistons. That is just absolutely absurd. Former Aztec, or I should say Aztec for life, doing good things, big things in the NBA. And the Padres, they earned that nice win against St. Louis, a 3-2 victory. Let's get into it, fellas. Joe Musgrove looks like he's in midseason form all of a sudden. Yeah, he's uh, he's on fire. I mean, this team, I don't know if they can be stopped. <laughs> this it was a must-win game, and they won. <laughs> <laughs> it was a must game win. nine of the season. It was a we spent we spent yeah. an hour and a half yesterday on on the 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 show of record, uh, explaining to our listeners why it was a must win game nine games into the season. <laughs> Wait a and thank God they won. Wait a second. Please, please, please tell me. Please tell I me. I feel like we I need see. to call Marty for this because she was the one who initiated the whole conversation. But basically, the point was like, like because of what happened last year, you are guilty until proven innocent. Like, no like, way. like this they, point in the season, oh, it's early. A month later, oh, it's early. We had Keith Law. We had, we've had like, like all these different, Ken Rose, like all these different fantastic, reputable national baseball analysts come on our show and be like in May or April or uh, April or maybe like, yeah, the Padres are still going to be a 95 win, 98 win team. Don't worry. And guess what? They weren't. And so because of that, we are taking a bit of a more skeptical approach to it, especially based on the fact that yesterday was the first game of the season where they held an opposing team to under four runs. So okay. given the ebbs and flows of this pitching staff, given the um, lack of consistency by the offense, we ha we deemed it a must-win game for the Padres, a prove-it game, and guess what? They pulled through. Well, I, I know you and Darren and Marty, your cohorts in the middays, were speaking with uh, very much a tongue-in-cheek disposition, uh, labeling game nine of the Padres' young season a must-win. But I will say this, to your credit and to the point that you guys were making, as absurd as it was, yeah. This season needs to go better early this year. I think especially like the things, the circumstances around the Padres and TD, we've talked about this at length in the mornings here, but like you lost Peter Seidler. Okay. You boosted season ticket prices. It is ever more confusing to even watch this team on television. Like you have to own like three different apps to see all the games. It's, it's bonkers yeah, what's seriously. happened. It's so so you have to have a better start this season than you did last year. So I don't know, three and or four and five feels a lot better than three and six after game nine. That's oh. all I have to say. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. It just, uh, you know, we joke about the win and that they're hot and they're surging. But yeah, you do kind of have it in the back of your mind. Like, man, I hope something is. It's starting to work here. I so hope something starts to click. The problem with that feeling is, I mean, they only put up three runs. I guess. I mean, I'd rather, I'd almost rather have the pitching and the defense hold them to two, where the Padres all they need is three runs, than having to worry about a nine, ten, you know, eleven, thirteen run game to try to get wins here. Yeah, I don't know. It, it look the old saying, and you remind us every time you do your NBA scores during your half times. You just need to have more points than your opponent, and that's how you get wins. <laughs> yeah. So as long as the Padres are putting up crooked numbers and they have uh, they they have their pitching intact the way it's looked the past two days. Now, they wasted a great outing from you, Darvish, yesterday. Uh, Joe Musgrove gets rewarded with his defense in the back end of the bullpen holding up. Suarez logging a five-out save was pretty impressive. He's starting to look like a closer. Yep. Um, Bogarts had a nice day at the plate. He went two for four. Uh, Higgy Shoka as the backup catcher, he threw out two runners at second and he hit a bomb off the second row of the Western metal supply building. It was a, it was a good showing for not just like players that you're going to depend on like Musgrove throughout the season, but for guys like, like Suarez who 
They've paid a boatload of money, but has been banged up. And with Matsui out, you need him to step into the closer role. He does a nice job for you. And then Higashioka, you pick him up, you sign him as a veteran depth player at an important position in your starting nine, and you give Campy a day off, and he becomes, you know, or I shouldn't say becomes a star, but he fills in mm-hmm. admirably for Campiasano. It was just a good outing. That was a good, solid day for the Padres on getaway day. Yeah, and it's uh, it's nice when you can come in and actually have Padre positives and not sit here and have to try to dig them up because there were a lot of positives there, a lot of encouraging things to see, especially when you're looking at the pitching staff that you thought or think might be a little shaky and you go, okay, here, Musgrove is still Musgrove. And then if Suarez is, you know, a closer that they're, that they're paying for, whew, it's nice when he starts to look like it. Do you guys want to hear a fun fact? I do. I do. Um, Kyle Higashioka is the second player ever, only the second player ever to hit a home run and throw out two runners in the same inning. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. That all happened okay. in the fourth. Wow. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Who's the other inning? player, by the way? I have no idea. Some dude in the 1960s. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Before my time. <laughs> Maybe Travis remembers. Uh, yeah. Let's Screw say, him. He's Dave dead Smith. now. Yeah. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> You find him out at a so, cornfield in Iowa or something. I don't know where was where was Field of Dreams? Yeah, in Iowa. Okay, good. You yeah, nailed that. Right. Yeah, good job. Did it. He's because he's Build dead. He's dead to us. Uh, Rich, <laughs> what, what'd you say that y- your feet look like? Oh, dude, not not good. not riches. Riches are. I mean, he's he's a damn foot model, man. Like the most perfect <laughs> arch I've ever seen in my life. It's insane. Yeah, right. Um, it's, uh, it's amazing, uh, how smooth that segue was, Jonathan, but I do want Thanks to- for ruining it. <laughs> Wait a- you just give us a start. Speaking of, Yoka does speaking of Subway footlongs. We have to go to break. I'm trying to set you up. I was getting there. I mean, <laughs> I'm a professional voice man, Jonathan. You go, hey, listen, so yeah, this hasn't been done since the 60s. Hey, Rich, weren't you saying something about your foot? <laughs> I'm just trying. I'm just I'm they had feet in the 60s, right? <laughs> right, Rich? Tell us about those feet. He used the first player ever with two and a half feet. <laughs> He found his other half a foot in the fourth inning. That's rare. (laughs) That home run was 411 feet. Speaking of feet. (laughs) (laughs) Holy God. All right. Coming up next. Speaking of a homer, we have another first homer of the season. Uh, We have to get into that because along with that, we are completely ignoring a storyline that's a lot more important than the home run. We'll get to that on the other side. But yeah. Good feet store, they've got you covered if you have lower body joint pain. If your hips are bad, you got a bad knee, ankles, feet, uh, your back. I, I struggle with back pain. I still do, but just so much less because I wear the art supports from the Good Feet store. And anybody who's ever struggled with back pain knows what I'm talking about. You have good days and bad days. And sometimes you have good weeks and bad weeks. Sometimes you have bad months. Those suck. When you are struggling with lower body joint pain, it can be completely debilitating. You don't want to get out of bed. And when you do, you're struggling through the day. It saps your energy. It's awful. So I go to the Good Feet store about two and a half years ago now. And I started wearing these art supports. The first week, I noticed a difference. I felt the back pain melting away. The knee pain I was experiencing in my right knee has all but disappeared. And I had hip pain coming on on that right side, too. That's virtually disappeared as well. It's pretty impressive. All you have to do is wear arch supports in your shoes. It requires no exercise. It requires nothing from you just committing to leaving these arch supports in the footwear you wear every day. So whether you're on your feet all day long, working at a bank or you're roofing houses, or you walk around a lot with the kids, you go to theme parks, you like to golf, whatever it is you're doing on your feet, if you wear the Good Feet Store arch supports, you're going to be better for it because your feet are the foundation of your body and your arches are very important. So get to the Good Feet Store, especially if you're a lower body joint pain sufferer. Uh, They will get you right. You can check them out at goodfeet.com. That's goodfeet.com.
one home run and we all get amnesia? Where did the story go? We'll remind you coming up next. This update is presented by Dairy Queen. Mm, I could use a vegan blizzard right now. Let's hope they have one. The Padres avoided a sweep by the Cardinals by winning the final game of the series 3-2 to two behind a stellar start from Joe Musgrove. They have the day off today before taking on the Giants up north. In the world of the NBA, the Lakers are headed home after a 5-1 and one road trip. Overall, they've won eight of their last nine, and they're a game and a half out of that sixth seed. Still currently positioned for the play-in tournament, but a sixth seed would guarantee them a playoff spot. Final NBA note, San Diego State basketball alum Malachi Flynn dropped 50 points off the bench last night for the Detroit Pistons. Here's another fun fact for you. Malachi Flynn is now the player with the lowest career points per game average to score 50 points in a game at 5.2 points per game in his career. Terrence Ross had 7.4 points per game when he scored his 50 burger a couple of years ago. Hey, DQ fans, they've got the deal of the century for you. Download the DQ app and buy one, get one free Blizzard treats on them. Just like that, you can get any two Blizzard treats for the price of one, only at participating DQ locations. Happy tastes good. Hey. Hey. Hey, we're going to be downtown. We're going to be downtown. Oh, it is National Burrito Day, as j says that very discreetly in my ear, because I thought it was yesterday. Turns out it's today. So Sombrero Mexican food going to be stopping by here in the 8 o'clock hour. I can't wait, man. I'm fired up. But I'm also fired up for Monday. We want you to join us April 8, 6 p.m. for the National Championship at Whiskey Girl downtown in the heart of the gas lamb, 702 Fifth Avenue. It's right on the corner of G Street. Tons of good food options. They got bucket and draft beer specials. They got tequila specials. We're going to be giving away prizes. Whiskey Girl is going to be giving away prizes. And San Diego Sports 760 is going to be giving away prizes throughout the game. Join us also right after the game. We're going to do a little karaoke, which I can't wait. I mean, you better bring it. <laughs> I love it so much. I love it so very much. Whiskey Girl on Monday. We're going to party. It's going to feel like mm -hmm. a Friday, but then you're going to have to wake up for work on Tuesday. And you're like, why did I do that to yeah. myself? Yeah. By the way, we what? got uh, we got some big things happening on Monday that will. Uh, I don't know if we announce that uh, tomorrow. We announce that Monday. Yeah, we 
We got to unveil some mm-hmm. things that are happening. A lot of word has been spread throughout our iHeart San Diego building, but some excitement brewing. Mm-hmm. Uh, we will definitely, uh, we'll we'll definitely share this, I guess, more later this week. We're running out of week, but you understand what I'm saying. Yo, yo. Um, yeah, don't so want to Sunday? tip our hand too far. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's right. Uh, Sunday is when we're going to do it. All right. So um, check this out. So Shohei Otani, I was reading this piece from The Athletic where an athletic writer was interviewing uh, Joe Madden, former manager of the Angels, uh, obviously uh, managed Shohei Otani early in his career during his time uh, getting his feet wet at the major league level. Jason Stark is the name of the writer. And Madden, he expressed like real visceral sadness for Shohei Otani because from his standpoint, he was taken completely advantage of by Ipe Matsuhara, who is his interpreter or former interpreter, who's being blamed for theft, stealing multiple millions of dollars from Shohei Otani, and I guess spending it an illegal gambling operation in Southern California. Well, so you have that story that breaks, uh, or I should say that that article that comes out, and it's it's one portrayal. And then there's really not a lot of talk about Shohei Otani and what's happening on the legal front. And then all of a sudden, yesterday, this happens. Shohei does what Shohei does. And it feels like everybody's just forgotten. Let's hear this uh, home run from Shohei Otani. Well, I, rarely do we play Dodgers highlights on this show, TD, but it felt it felt like there's a bigger reason to do so because while everybody else is just celebrating his first homer as a Dodger, I want to get back to this story that's going – like, why haven't we heard any follow-up? What's going on with Major League Baseball's investigation? Why hasn't there been any more questions asked about Shohei Otani's interpreter? Why we don't even know what law enforcement group he's reported this four plus million dollar theft to. This is all very bizarre. And the fact that it's operating in the background of the Major League Baseball season and we're just moving on with our lives like nothing to see here. It's bizarre to me. Yeah, no, I I totally agree. Uh, However, kind of expected. I mean, I I think we all kind of called this of. Look, Major League Baseball doesn't want a Shohei scandal. The Dodgers don't want a Shohei scandal. There's all kinds of money tied up in this in a a million different places, not just the Dodgers writing the check to Shohei, but the fact that Shohei brings in a ton of dollars worldwide and viewers to Major League Baseball. So they don't want their guy to be shown in any bad light. So I don't know if it's really unexpected that all of a sudden, Hey, let's talk about home runs and let's not bring up any sort of controversy at all. But I'll tell you what, he hits that home run. There's no one there in LA that uh that minds it. I mean, listen to that crowd just light up. It's it's not like not like anybody's upset at him over there. It's just everybody else on the outside looking in, going, Hey, wait a minute, time out. If this was our guy, sure feels like you'd be looking a little deeper on this. Well, if I could play contrarian here, which I rarely do, um, <laughs> I if Shohei Otani was on the Padres, we probably and he hit a home run, we probably would have reacted the same exact way that all these Dodger fans react. I'm like, nobody is like screaming like cheater or like illegal gambler, like while he's popping a home run at his home stadium, right? Like, like this is what major league, the problem with major league baseball is they only really have regionalized stars, like, you don't really have like Fernando Tatis was an international star until what happened happened now he's still a star but i think his brand was hurt by that like baseball doesn't have that many international superstars to help the like the nba has those has a bunch of those guys football has those guys baseball does not they need to protect their assets and shohei otani is one of the biggest assets they have but time out here because you brought up fernando tatis jr i think it's interesting that you did because i do think that padres fans were critical of fernando i think padres fans did react the way you would assume Dodgers fans should react. But he got caught. Otani hasn't quite been caught yet. If it came out that Otani knew about this or had some hand in this, 
I think it would be a different reaction, but like he is innocent until proven guilty in this situation. It was unfortunate that for Fernando Tatis Jr. was proven guilty pretty quickly. Well, I, I think where I have a hang up with it is their explanation of it is not convincing to me. Uh, and and if that is the real story, I would be absolutely mind blown. But I mean, we've talked about it several times here on this show. You, you mean you're telling me that a guy that makes three hundred thousand dollars a year is able to bankroll four and a half million bucks with an illegal betting service? I, it just seems implausible to me. I mean, so I mean, that's it, I, I don't know that that's me racking up a few million dollars somewhere. And that's not going to happen. So you're going to tell me there's no way that Shohei had any involvement in this whatsoever? I'm not saying that I believe it. I'm just saying based on the evidence that they're providing, if you're a Dodger fan, you're obviously just going to believe whatever ever Major League Baseball is telling you. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if I would. I mean, if, if you if you put him on the Padres and it happened here on the Padres, would I be wanting to look past it because I want to make sure Shohei? You're absolutely damn right. But would I be poking fun at this? You're absolutely damn right because I don't buy it yeah you know here's my problem with it when whenever everybody is telling me one thing right when whenever the the media like is 100 percent on the side of one side of a story without evidence like that like you 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 gave you gave the perfect explanation on tatis like we had evidence he failed the drug test everybody rushed to whatever their uh, opinions or subjective uh discussion over fernando tatis jr was but here we don't have evidence, and it feels like everybody's rushing to the defense of Shohei Otani like, oh, the naivety of a foreign-born player who was trusting his interpreter led to him lending him money or paying a sports betting outfit because maybe he didn't even know where the money was heading through his interpreter, blah, 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 and he got taken advantage of. It's like, right, that could be the story. Or, in my mind at least, a more likely story is Shohei – liked to gamble and in so doing he didn't want his name attached to it and he found a guy who was close to him anyways who was willing to carry that water and who is close to one of the most magnificent players on the planet and it's hard to say no to people like that I don't know where the story's going to go but I know this and not trying to contradict what the you know what what any of the evidence has shown because we really don't have any evidence yet it's just what I feel like happened yeah. And so until proven otherwise, I, I feel like this is suspicious. Yeah, I, I completely agree because we don't have really any evidence at all. The only thing we have is whatever Shohei said in the, in his press conference, which I mean, he didn't take questions and, and we heard through an interpreter. So I, if they're, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it's, it, it is what it is at this point. I don't see this going anywhere. My feeling is it will be very, very quiet and we won't hear anything until they reach a conclusion. And the conclusion will be the interpreter is in the wrong and he will get penalized in some way. Probably won't be jail time. Somehow he'll escape that. There'll be a fine somewhere from someone and that's it. The end. Yep. Shohei moves yep. on. You're 100% right. I, I completely agree with that. And in the meantime, keep hitting those home runs, kid. We're enjoying yeah, the hell out of it. Yeah, no kidding. No kidding. <laughs> Which, by the way, I don't see the Padres winning the West here in the Dodgers. So if they want to beat down the Giants some, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah, that's cool. Um, We're good with that. Um, We're also good with this. A team that beat the Aztecs had a major failure to launch. How is it going to affect them uh, in their final four posi uh, uh, positioning. We're going to get to that on the other side. But before we scoot here, got to talk to you guys about my favorite dentist. That's right. You heard somebody talk about their dentist in a glowing light. That's kind of a rare statement, but <laughs> Dr. Jordan Colby. I was going to say, speaking of, of launch, it used to be tough for you to chew your lunch, right? <laughs> <laughs> it was only cottage cheese or applesauce for me for a long time thank you for bringing up the old times those were tough times before i went to ocean view dental <laughs> no, it's true though you know it's so funny how when you have bad teeth or like you're missing teeth especially the ones that are important for chewing how many foods you actually l watch people enjoying and you're like, oh, I'm so envious of, uh, envious of them. You know, being able to chew and stuff, that's cool. Like, I, I really was in that camp for a while. I had a bunch of broken teeth from my time playing football. 
I played without a mouthpiece. I made a mess of my molars. And so as a result, I had to have teeth extractions. I had implants put in and I was so scared who to go to. I didn't know who I could trust to do this kind of major dental surgery. And so I, I get a referral to go over to Ocean View Dental and meet with Dr. Jordan Colby. And where I was told before that this would take like a year and a half to two years of my life to accomplish, he told me it would take three months. When I was told before that I would have to visit like four different medical offices to have this procedure done, he said, you're just going to come to my office here in Oceanside and we're going to handle this for you. And everything he said was 100% true. And by the way, he saved me a bunch of money. I don't want to get into all the specifics, but he saved me a bunch of money by going his route as opposed to seeing like four different doctors the other way that I was told to do it. Check them out at oceanviewdental.net. Dr. Jordan Colby is a lifesaver, a game changer, and he's an incredible dentist. So if you or your family, if you're looking for a new dentist, look no further. Check them out at oceanviewdental.net. Man, Patrick Mahomes, he's got everything. Well, except this. We'll explain. Coming up next.
Big Rich TD and Fletch, our 2024 iHeartRadio Music Awards was a historic night of music. And you can stream the whole thing on Hulu right now. So check that out when you have a sec. We got a skedaddle here. Meanwhile, our group text between the three of us has been popping off at the break. <laughs> Concerned for J. You, guy, you guys are artists. That's all I'm saying. That's why I told Rich. I'm yeah. like, you're the Pablo Picasso of texting. Well, that's more a- of Jackson Pollock. I just spray it everywhere. You know. Oh, you're uh, spraying something. That's for sure. Well, I, what can I tell oh. you? It's paint, <laughs> guys. It's paint. Well, anyways, um, Patrick Mahomes. <laughs> he's got a. He's got a busy home life. Uh, he's got Brittany Mahomes, his wife, who's a mother of two, but also a swimsuit babe and a social media influencer. Sports Illustrated. He's got a model now. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Swimsuit model. Yeah. He's got um. He's got a brother, Jackson, who's a TikTok influencer who was recently, um, I guess, accused is the right word, mm-hmm. uh, or char- I, I can't remember if he was charged with a lewd act against a business owner in Kansas City, and all that got scraped away. Um, and then his father, his father, he gets in on the act with his third DUI or DWI. Jeez. uh down in texas which i'm in the middle of investigating by the way but um <laughs> wow, wow was that was that in texas as well yeah he was he was he they live in texas or his parents live oh in that's texas. right yeah um so he gets his third this was the week of the super bowl if you remember and now he's facing 10 years in Golly, prison if he, man i mean it's a max sentence i'm assuming but it's just crazy that he's so talented and he's surrounded with all of these other things. Yeah, it's crazy he's able to to shake that off, right, and still play at this level. Like, if the home life was fantastic, you know, if his wife wasn't creating animosity between people uh, posting things online and his brother wasn't uh, getting in trouble with uh, with many different allegations and his dad wasn't doing stupid things, what level would Patrick Mahomes play at? You know what I'm saying? Like, if all of a sudden the mind is clear. You, you don't think that he's even better because this is his outlet? Like, like when I when I, somebody wrongs me or, like, I have adversity through with the people that I love, when I'm at the gym, I lift harder and I oh. lift better because, well. you, like, could, because this is your outlet. <laughs> I love you so much. <laughs> Not me, man. I'll tell you what. So, I, would, I would say the majority of people, J. Riff, uh, it's, if your home life is screwed up, work life. No, no, too. no. Well, first of all, Jim isn't work. And also, yeah. like, I understand. I understand that, like, like his job is professional football. But you don't think that, like, when he sees a DB, it's like, oh, that's like he's picturing his brother. He's like, I'm going to burn this MF for, you know? Yeah, it's uh, you know what there is some. It's funny the way you described it because there is a sanctuary piece to playing football, especially because it's such an all-encompassing sport. You can't think about anything else other than football when you're playing football. Otherwise, you're going to get killed out there. So there is kind of a nice aspect when things are going wrong in your life that I experienced myself, where you can sort of shut your brain off and just put everything on a shelf over there. Well, you just concentrate on keeping the main thing, the main thing, which is football. So, you know, Brittany could have all of her social media friends at the house she wants, or his brother Jackson can be up to whatever he's up to. His dad could be getting in trouble with the law. But Patrick, at least he has this practice space or this game field that he can put all that on the shelf for. And you're right. Maybe it does help help him, you know, get better gains in the gym, bro. I mean, maybe right? that's part of it. Make bank, bro. <laughs> You mentioned uh, a nice aspect, and uh, I got to tell you, uh, a few months ago, we didn't have nice aspects. Uh-huh. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. And then Some people uh, would say we had bad aspects. Yeah, right. Yeah. I mean, like big aspects. Yeah, and large. so they were like, you got you to gotta slim down those aspects because you can barely fit through the door. That mm-hmm. aspect is so wide. So yeah. SD Fat Loss stepped in, and they said, they said, we can trim that down. We can help you out there. We can help you sh- shade, shade a few, shed a few pounds. Wayne and Chloe actually caught us a couple of fat aspects. Yeah. That's what they call it. Yeah. And we were like, we don't disagree. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, how could we? I mean, he looked in the mirror and there was a lot of aspect. That's all. That's all there was. So, so they said, yeah, we can, we can help you shed some of that weight. In fact, we're going to help you shed 20 to 30 pounds in eight weeks time. And I think we all went, oh, Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure that'll work because we had been doing next level fit guy stuff. We had been dialed in on some of these fad diets 
and we didn't lose any weight. In fact, we gained weight. It didn't quite work. So whoops. Yeah. Whoops. Uh, but SD fat loss, they're like, no, no, no. It's, it's, you're not doing it the healthy way, man. Those fat diets are not the healthy way to lose diet or lose weight. I mean, that uh, it's completely unhealthy. If you're doing some kind of prescription drug medication diet, we, we don't even know what some of these prescription drugs are going to do here in the long term. And I tell you what, they're just appetite suppressants. So you'll lose weight taking them. But as soon as you stop whatever it is, you're going to gain that weight back and then some. And you don't want to do that. That is very unhealthy. Look, Wayne, Chloe, they'll set you up. They'll set you up the right way. You're going to lose weight. You're going to lose weight fast. I lost 31 pounds in eight weeks. Rich lost 35 pounds. Fletch sure. over 40 pounds. I mean, it, it's absolutely incredible. And then the beauty of it is here we are six months, I guess, after we started this thing and we still have that weight gone. And we want you to do the same thing because it's summertime. We're heading towards summertime. It's the time of year where you start to go, hey, I'm going to start thinking about putting on a bathing suit. I got to start thinking about looking good when I head out to the beach or the pool, wherever you're at. Look, we get it. We get it because we had the same thought. Like, we want to look good, bro. And now we do. <laughs> thanks to SD Fat Loss. No, you know what? <laughs> Let them help you out. They, they, it'll, it'll change your life. You're going to feel better. You're going to move around better. You're going to look better. And J Riff wants me to stop this three minute read. I get it. <laughs> SDFatLoss.com. Go there right now. SDFatLoss.com. The consultation's free.
This update is presented by Anderson Plumbing, Heating, and Air. The Padres were able to avoid a sweep by the Cardinals by winning 3-2 to two yesterday. That was behind a stellar start from Joe Musgrove. Day off today for the Friars before heading up north to take on the Giants tomorrow. In the world of the NBA, the Lakers are headed home after a 5-1 and one road trip. Overall, they've won eight of their last nine. They're a game and a half out of that sixth seed in the West. Still in the play-in conversation, but they would like to secure a, an official playoff spot. Final note on the NBA, San Diego State basketball alum Malachi Flynn dropped 50 points off the bench last night for the Detroit Pistons. Heavy rain could lead to sewer line issues. Get ahead with Anderson's drain specialists. Nobody wants clients like they do, serving over half a million residential clients for over 45 years. Anderson Plumbing, Heating, and Air. That's AndersonPHA.com. Yeah. Happy Thursday to those who celebrate Big Rich, TD, and Fletch with you, San Diego Sports 760. All of a sudden, everything looks different. And I know I'm not talking about the complexion of this show because Fletch is out. He just had his ankle surgery. Things went well. He appreciates all the well wishes from those who were concerned yesterday. Jay Riff filling in for the final time this week. And then it, then it, it comes down to only two. Well, it's just me and TD we, left in the studio. We just got word. <laughs> we just got word, Rich. Jay Riff's yeah, going to yeah, come yeah. in 8 o'clock tomorrow for a bar cart Friday. You got to be kidding me. I'm not kidding this you. Guy I'm not kidding is, you. I'm not. I will not be participating, but I'll be here to observe. What? When I, whenever this I works. thought, I, well, yeah, you have to, we're going to give you copious amounts of alcohol. That's how Bar Cart Friday <laughs> oh, No, you're not. Yeah. No, 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 <laughs> so sorry is that what we're making tomorrow we're uh we're gonna we're gonna make our own theme drinks uh tony conja <laughs> tony conja gonna be back next week uh but due to due to lack of funding and people in studio we're like we maybe we just maybe we just do this one our, ourselves and then he well, was yeah. like yeah that might be the best best route since there's no host yeah, yeah, we uh, w without without Fletch and and without a guarantee until this morning, I guess, right. of an engineer, we uh, we were kind of up the creek. So I have already had Tony Conja of Keg and Bottle Ten locations, by the way, around San Diego. He also has a place out in Chicago. He's got a place up in Santa Barbara, and you can ship to just about anywhere in the U.S. of A. around this country, and he has. So kegandbottle.com, if you listen to us from afar and you're jealous that you can't get in on the San Diego keg and bottle action, oh, don't you worry. The web presence, it works because <laughs> I've had the ingredients for my little drink that I'm going to make uh, shipped out to me. And so I'm going to text you what ingredients you need to bring to the studio. This way we can all enjoy these drinks together yes uh as i'm gonna have a little southern themed libation for us well in my drink that i'm making i went to keganbottle.com and shipped it straight to you so you should be receiving that today so you can put together oh. that cocktail it's, look, listen a... <laughs> keganbottle.com <laughs> is where it's at <laughs> okay so th that's ridiculous so yesterday i get the shipment from tony i get it from keganbottle.com <laughs> And I get this shipment in, and I'm looking. My the family I'm staying with are looking at me like, are you on <laughs> like I'm, well, well, I mean, it's work, you know, it's work. You guys, so I'm gonna, gonna get you another let me box go to the of store. booze. <laughs> I'm gonna get another box of booze. They're gonna be like, why didn't you just go to the liquor store? No, I gotta do it through kegandbottle.com. <laughs> Holy lord, this is ridiculous. <laughs> We are ridiculous. Yeah, it's good. I like it. I uh, I, I, <gasps> I feel like we should use kegandbottle.com a lot more often here. I, you know what? Yeah. What's funny is, so I set up the shipment, and it's like, it'll be there tomorrow. And I'm like, that's how I'm going to send everybody gifts from now on. Send it's them across the country. Yeah. Speaking of gifts, how about Stefan Diggs? Just, uh, you know, he was packaged up and shipped off to uh, Houston. So all of a sudden yesterday, end of the show, the news breaks. Uh, J Riff was the first voice you heard about this on San Diego Sports 760 as he comes back with a news update. And it is Stefan Diggs to the Houston Texans. CJ Stroud, the second year quarterback this upcoming season, is going to be spoiled with options out of his offense. So Tank Dell had a nice season for them last year. 
uh, Trey Brown, Noah Brown at times. Mm-hmm. He filled in admirably for injuries that they were having around that offense. But he was throwing to a patchwork crew out there in Houston. And all of a sudden, they get Joe Mixon uh, in free agency from the Cincinnati Bengals. And they just trade for Stefan Diggs from the Buffalo Bills. And it feels like the AFC has shifted. Like, this is like a seismic shift. And and it's to- pointing toward the AFC South all of a sudden. Yeah, it's a, it's a little crazy, right? Uh, I mean, because it, it's so unexpected. It's I, I I mean, honestly, halfway through last season, I'm like, yeah, I mean, the Texans, they got a few wins. That's fun. And then all of a sudden, they're in the playoffs. C.J. Stroud looks amazing. All, you're looking at him like, wow, the, I mean, this is the... This is the quarterback to get, which, by the way, do you remember the end of the 2022-23 season? It was the Texans and the Colts. And yeah. then, and if the Texans lose, they get the first-round pick. They end up winning that game. They fire their coach. They have a second-round pick now. In the second-round pick, they go with C.J. Stroud because— or second overall pick. Yeah. Se- second overall, yeah. I'm sorry, second, second overall pick. Uh, who was who went first? The, Bryce Young. Bryce Young. I'm like, I can't remember his name. Bryce Young, not as great of a season as CJ Stroud. No. So, I mean, that win set this Texans team up. It's incredible. It's bizarre to think about how different the world would look right now in the NFL if Bryce Young was a Houston Texan instead of a Carolina Panther. Because, again, remember that Carolina Panther selection came by way of the bears, uh, you know, after trade. So it, it's just amazing how everything added up to land the pieces where they ended up getting selected at, or I should say the draft picks where they ended up getting selected at because Houston, the arrows pointing up Carolina, the arrows pointing down and you never know how things would have worked out. If Houston actually had the first overall pick, if Lovey Smith hadn't won that game and damaged their ability to select at the very tippy top of the draft. Yeah. But you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. You know, you can look back and say, "Oh, well, we would have done it the exact same way." Because CJ Stroud is just such a special player. It's like <laughs> maybe they would have, maybe they wouldn't have. Right. But they got it right because he's significant. Um, you mentioned earlier today, TD, that Will Anderson is also their their third overall pick, the Houston Texans last year, and he ended up being a uh, a, a defensive rookie of the year for them. They bring in Daniel Hunter. So I look at the AFC now and I say, okay, who's going to be good next year? You would assume Burrow with the Bengals is going to be good because Burrow's good. Mm -hmm. But we said that about the Chargers last season because Herbert's good, and that was a mess. Right. Herbert has Jim Harbaugh, so that seems like it's better, more stable. We're still waiting on Trevor Lawrence and Doug Peterson to pull it all together. Is Miami with Tua all that great, or are they going to flame out at some point? Aaron Rodgers with the Jets, is he going to make it out of the first game alive? And <laughs> will, then, will he get to the fifth snap this season? <laughs> the Buffalo Bills, they just traded away Stefan Diggs. They got rid of Tredavious White on defense. It seems like they're trimming the fat instead of adding. So the Houston Texans, it feels like they have a great opportunity. Now, I hadn't even mentioned the AFC North. Obviously, Pittsburgh Steelers always find a way. They have Russell Wilson and Justin Fields. Um, the the Ravens played in the AFC Championship game, and I didn't mention the Kansas City Chiefs, who are good. But right. It's like, well, it, but you, it, it, you did it, mention it, the Bengals there, which, I mean, they have Joe Mixon that they took uh, – or, the, sorry, Joe Mixon left the Bengals to go to the Texans. So yeah. you have this seismic shift there. You have a seismic shift in Buffalo as Stefan Diggs leaves yesterday. And, yeah, man, I mean, it, it is it is pretty impressive to see how much is changing in the landscape here. I mean, even without Stefan Diggs, I mean, you still you still call Buffalo Bills a player here, right? Oh yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I only because you still have Josh Allen, and they've been successful regardless of the circumstances. They their biggest issue though is running into the Chiefs in the postseason. Now they, from a personnel standpoint, just got much worse. But I think they did some nice things defensively last year, which is the reason why they were they were trusting themselves to unload some of the pricier veteran talent on that defense. But, I mean, they're down Poyer and White on the defensive secondary side. They let them both walk. And you lose Diggs on the offense. So this really becomes the Josh Allen show. It's like 
you know, they're paying him a lot of money. He's going to have to prove to them why they're paying him a lot of money because he's going to be carrying that team, not all by himself. But, I mean, the Jets and the Dolphins in that division, those are hard outs. The Patriots, they just signed Bailey Zappi to a $50 million contract, so he's going to be their starter. I don't think you have to worry about them too much, but we'll see. It just it's an it's an interesting time to be a Buffalo Bill. I, I'm very curious how they look ne- next season. Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm I I think it's interesting. Of last season, to me, all the eyeballs were on the AFC. Those were the interesting teams. Here we are in the offseason. The AFC is making the moves. I mean, it, yeah. it's almost almost exclusively, which is incredible to me. That these these teams that were good are getting better. Some of the the teams that were on top maybe a little bit worse. Uh, but it, it's it's mind blowing to me as I go through the teams. That, I mean, you start naming them: the Bills, the Dolphins, the Jets, the Ravens, the Steelers, the Bengals, the Browns, the Texans, the Chiefs, maybe the Chargers. That's a lot of teams to go. Yeah, I mean, there's all you can make a viable pitch here that they could be a Super Bowl contender. Yeah. Now, listen, I, I think you have to give some credit where credit's due on the other side to the NFC because Brock Purdy, he's not going anywhere anytime soon for the 49ers. He got them to a Super Bowl after an NFC championship. But they signed Josh year. Dobbs, Rich. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah. <laughs> so he's undoubtedly going to replace Purdy. Uh, <laughs> and then you look at the Dallas Cowboys. They're kind of up against it. They have to win. Otherwise, McCarthy and Dak may be out jobs unless they – re-sign Dak or extend Dak. We'll see what happens there. The Detroit Lions, I mean, what Dan Campbell and Jared Goff have done, and not by themselves, Ben Johnson, the uh, the offensive coordinator, has been tremendous. That's a team to beat. We'll see where the Eagles are at. We'll see what happens with Stafford and the Rams, who had a 10-win season last year. I mean, you look around the NFC. Oh, Jordan Love with the Packers. Yeah. That was an interesting story all season long. Tampa Bay with Tampa Baker Mayfield. He's going to be back. So this year in the in the offseason, there have been a lot of subtle moves in free agency, and we're headlong toward the NFL draft this month, where it feels like, I don't know, maybe that playing field has gotten a little bit more level between the NFC and the AFC, but we'll see. It's tough to call by, when it's April. By the way, it was the Colts, right, that signed the elite Joe Flacco? I mean, that comeback player of the year. (laughs) I mean, all of a sudden, they got good. That's right. (laughs) They got cougared. The Colts got cougared. (laughs) It's an unbelievable line. By the way, in in studio right now, in studio right now, Rich, we're watching tennis. J-Ref throwing tennis on the screen. Yeah, Charleston Open, baby. Oh, Uh, yeah. You know what? I'm so glad he mentioned that because everybody thinks about April, the month of April. They're like, oh, my gosh, we have the NFL draft. We have (laughs) opening day all across baseball. The Masters. Um, The Masters is coming up just around the corner. And, of course, the Charleston Open. (laughs) Oh, the soothing sounds of the Charleston Open. Thank you, J-Riff. Is that played on clay or grass? No, this this is on clay. Emma Navarro, the 10th ranked women's tennis player in the world, is just smoking her competition right now. It is oh, an absolute pleasure. Yeah. Uh, Travis is getting distracted. I see him. Like, Rich oh, is talking. No, to Tra- no, on, I'm just on, watching on, Travis, you, like, stare at the no, screen. Because rewind that just for Boy. a second. I need you to rewind it just for a second here, J-Riff, as we're watching the Charleston. There we go. You can stop right there. Okay, we're going to yeah. watch this play out. And then, uh, I don't know, the person in the pink hits a shot. And look at the look at the dude. He covers, he covers the important part. Which- yeah. To not get hit with yeah, the ball. Yeah, because they're not allowed to move. And so if you get hit, you want to make sure that you're protecting the important parts of your body. Wow. They're not allowed this to move. Is, you have I mean, to take it. This is stressful. You know what else is stressful, Rich? Is normally <laughs> when you're here and we decide, hey, we should we should do some double bag Colombian coffee. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Uh, when you're not here, I mean, when you're when you are here, it's funny, right? Everybody comes in, ha ha ha, you guys are crazy. I'm doing it by myself, no rich in the kitchen. I started getting screamed at. <laughs> Wait, what are you doing? No, throw that Why out would immediately. Put, <laughs> Why would you put so many grinds it's in the just, coffee pot? I, I, I did filter. I did Colombian. I did another filter on top of that and Colombian. And listen, they thought I was insane. They made me pour it people, out immediately. People really... For them to judge us on our coffee, I feel like I. They, well, 
listen, I I really have some concerns about the taste of the people that we work with. But that's just look, it's a different debate for a different time. <laughs> I'll be back soon, buddy. That's all I can say. Good. Also, thank goodness. Come Coming up soon, we we got that fifty dollar gift card to Islands. Okay, if you're in, if you're planning on enjoying uh, an island getaway this March, uh, as you're watching the men's tournament or at low college basketball, uh, you're gonna want to stay tuned because we're gonna give you and your family fifty dollars to go spend at Islands Restaurant. Coming up here in just a few minutes, we're gonna do that. Let's hit a halftime first, though. Oh, there it is. <laughs> we didn't know. We didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't know. I looked over at J-Rip as well, and he just sat there stoic, staring at me. I'm trying to practice stoicism, so you're you're my uh you're my test dummy. Um <laughs> uh Rich, <laughs> what you, you got? What you got on the half? Sorry, the, the Celsius just what? sitting now. I'm dying. Um, Rich. <laughs> the, yeah. uh, the Celsius. What? When you named all of the important sports in the month of April. You forgot maybe the most pivotal one. That's Which English Premier is... League soccer. Oh, Jesus. Guys, <laughs> we are we are going down to the wire in the EPL. I mean, things are heating up. So yesterday, Arsenal takes down Luton 2-0. Man City squeaks out a 2-1 win against, oh, who do they play? Crap. I'm, get, it's I'm getting a, dizzy right now. Who did Man City play? Uh, they played Aston Villa. So basically... Oh, right. Yeah, Arsenal oh, is up. Home. Arsenal is up by one point right now in the English Premier League, right? Well, today Liverpool and Sheffield play. Liverpool is one point behind Arsenal. If Liverpool wins this, they will be two points clear of Arsenal in the top spot of the English Premier League. Wow. And they're trying to make it to the quarterfinals of the Europa League. Guys, listen, things wow. are really, really interesting listen, across the pond. Listen, and we have to be able to be paying attention. Yeah, hold on. He can't hurt you here. He can't hurt you here. Okay. <laughs> Say, Darren. Darren is nowhere to be found, okay? <laughs> You're amongst friends. This is a safe place, okay? You know what this is? This is classic Stockholm Syndrome. Mm. You have now fallen in love with your captor. You don't have to do this. You don't have to pretend like you're a soccer fan in front of us. We get it. We know. We know, all right? EPL, EPL, whatever yeah, they were whatever. taking on the Tour de France. Wait, yeah. We get it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Listen, uh, two yeah. points. Two points insurmountable in soccer. It's not insurmountable, <laughs> actually. There's still a couple weeks left. But it is really important. Every point matters. The final week of the season is May 19th, the this, final weekend. I mean, this could end tied at zero. It could. Yeah. <laughs> of course it could. But, I was, or, I was or, but Sheffield United is but, the bottom of the table and Liverpool's at the top. So my guess is Liverpool's probably going to win like two-ish nil, maybe three nil. Also, we don't say zero in soccer. We say nil. So it could end nil. Not, 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 not in the is it nil all? A-S. Yeah. It's ASL? Is that what it is? That's American Sign Language. No, the EPL. Yeah, but but what's the American Sign Language? MLS? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's You it. mean like the oh. the city <laughs> that forgot. we live in just got a team yeah, 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 for yeah. that league? Yeah, 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 that. That Dude, MLS. Yeah. They got the uh, the uh, SDFC. That's the, right. Uh, the San Diego Football Club. Wait, knows. hold on. Did they stop at SDFC because they couldn't decide on a name? No, it's because... I think you so. do. Well, no, but hold no, on. No, no. They announced that there was going to be an SDFC, and I was like, hey, right on. And they're like, we'll announce the colors and the name later. And then no, like the a crest. month later. The, we knew the name. That was the name? That was the name. The whole time. Wait, the no, whole time. That's not what, what? I heard. Okay. No, on. they said we'll also, announce the colors and, show, and the crest. I thought they were doing like a naming thing. Like, yeah. you remember how like Soccer City, they let people name things when they're going yeah. up against SCSU like and we're, SCSU won? Like we we're going to name like, the new pandas at the zoo. We were all going to get to like, vote on it. Wasn't Footy McFooty Face one of them? <laughs> like, what, was it, honestly, wasn't that one of the team names? I'm not kidding. <laughs> was it really? I'm pretty sure it was Contender. Footy. I think it got down to the wire. Footy um, McFooty Face. <laughs> which by the way i don't know if it's better than sdfc i know it's a bit more creative i'm just saying wow wait yeah. so are you guys telling me that come february 2025 big rich td and fletch isn't going to be the morning destination for all of your sdfc oh. content hang on a second wait. we didn't say that <laughs> yeah in fact we're gonna go out to the first game we're gonna be the opening kick okay we're gonna go out Heck there yeah. we're gonna we're, whatever you do, we're gonna drop the ball. Or, yeah, you, know, you do. You are we're, good at that. We are. Yeah, we're gonna. What, what do you call it? When? What's the first thing? 
they don't have like there's no like first pitch. It's just like you have an opening ceremony and then they have kickoff. Who we're gonna who kick kicks off? off? Do you flip a coin? Yeah, who do? Yeah. Or you flip a you flip a card. Yeah, they have some delineation to figure out which team kicks off. Wait, first. do you don't know you what even, the deli- wait, delineation is? Wait a second. Wait a second. So you're a soccer fan. You just gave us an update don't on the Google. Uh, do not Google. <laughs> and you have I'm looking at jackets. I'm looking at jackets, dude. Okay, listen, again, Darren's not here. He can't hurt you. You don't have to talk about soccer. First of all, Darren is everywhere all the time, and he can. <laughs> he is elusive. Darren would know how the game starts, is all I'm saying. <laughs> that He yeah. would, because he's a true soccer fan. Exactly. Whatever you're doing right now is scaring us, J-Rip. Okay, it's scaring us, and we're worried. By the way, how come, how come you say all of the soccer terms, like you say pitch and nil and kit, but then you don't call it football? Because we yeah. live in America. <laughs> okay, and you so never... then why don't we say zero in field? Because that's because we ha- we have <laughs> we have normalized. Hold on, it, that's a good question. We have normalized calling it soccer, but we haven't normalized all the other verbiage that for like throughout the game. So like all of that is stayed the same. I'm gonna dump button you. America. <laughs> all, we, all we're saying is, do you call them cleats or boots? I call them boots and soccer. Oh, oh my, my God. God. Oh, no. no. Okay, we have to go. Yeah. We have to go. All right, we're delaying the morning That's monologue because we all need to throw up, <laughs> uh, including you, j Riff. You should probably purge. I'm very disappointed in you. Um, okay, yeah, we're going to take a quick break. What did you whisper into my ear, by the way? You uh, speaking of purging, how do you get skinnier? <laughs> <laughs> I have stopped Listen, with bulimia. Yeah, bulimia. Thanks to- <laughs> Bul- bulimia is just one of those fat diets. <laughs> <laughs> bulimia is when you yo-yo your food that's good point yeah. it's, it's down and then it's back up that's right i'll tell you what and we have since uh foregone that as a as a potential weight loss remedy uh and we've made room in our lives and in our hearts for sdfatloss.com i love how blunt that name is by the way like i love the fact that they're like listen are you in san diego yeah as a matter of fact i am are you fat? <laughs> yes, <laughs> indeed. Do you want to lose it? <laughs> also true. SDFatLoss.com. That's right. Dude, it makes perfect sense because this is the truth. Look, anybody who's listening to the sound of our voice, you should not feel mocked or shamed because we, like you, were fat. We wanted to lose the fat. We looked at SDFatLoss.com, and honestly, the three of us together, we're like, oh, this isn't going to work for us. There's no chance this is going to work for us. And guess what? It worked for us. It was the craziest thing. We met with Wayne and Chloe, who were our weight loss team through this entire thing. They sent us this packet of information. They told us exactly how this was going to work. There was a lot of hand holding at first. I think we were trouble cases for them. That's okay. And they said, "Look, we made it through. We're gonna get, we're, we're gonna get you. We're gonna get you on the right path." And it was awesome because it worked right away. In the first seven days, I dropped fourteen pounds. I remember texting Wayne and Chloe or, or using the app to message them. And I was saying to them, like, is this safe that I'm losing this much weight this quick? That was actually a concern. They were like, no, listen, you had a lot of weight to lose, and this is a natural part of our plan. So you lose the weight, and then you maintain your weight loss. That's the most brilliant part about this. There's no yo-yo dieting. You're doing this the natural way, the, the way your body is supposed to lose weight. It's really impressive how it works. So with SCFatLoss.com, it's a plan. And it's not only a plan that you can stick to, but also it's a fun plan to do with friends. Like, so if you have a spouse who's interested in losing weight, or you got a group of buddies who are looking to lose some weight too, or you got a grandfather, a grandmother, an aunt, an uncle, uh, um, somebody, a coworker who you could do this with, uh, it makes it a lot easier for us. We enjoy doing it together. It kind of becomes a competition. You get on a scale every day and you're like, oh, how many, how many pounds did you lose? It was awesome. So again, sdfatloss.com is where you find them. Weight loss the natural way. Sustainable weight loss. No more yo-yo dieting. Check them out at sdfatloss.com.
This update is presented by Anderson Plumbing, Heating, and Air. Padres avoided the sweep against the Cardinals yesterday, winning 3-2 to two behind a stellar start for Joe Musgrove. Day off today, heading up north to take on Sleepy Bob Melvin and the Giants tomorrow. In the NBA, the Lakers are coming home after a 5-1 and one road trip, a desperate attempt to try and get into the playoff. They're currently in the play-in, only a game and a half back with a couple of games left to go in the regular season. Final NBA note, Malachi Flynn came off the bench for the Detroit Pistons last night. The former San Diego State Aztec turned to pro, scored 50 points. That's it. Heavy yeah. rain can lead to sewer line issues. Yes. Get ahead with Anderson's drain specialists. Nobody wants clients like they do, serving over half a million residential clients for more than 45 years. Anderson Plumbing, Heating, and Air. That's AndersonPHA.com. Yeah, yeah, indeed, indeed. And join us on Monday as the madness continues. Uh, April 8th, 6 p.m. That is Monday. We're going to be out at Whiskey Girl for the national championships downtown, right in the heart of the gas lamp, 702 Fifth Avenue, right in the corner of G Street, baby. Plenty of food options, bucket and draft beer specials, as well as tequila specials. Whiskey Girl going to be giving out prizes. We're going to be giving out prizes all throughout the game. And then we're going to be hanging out afterwards, probably because. The party ain't going to stop, and they got karaoke, so we'll be singing there. It's going to be a good time, man. Make sure you join us Monday, 6 o'clock, Whiskey Girl. I love that. Mm. I love that so much. I love a little basketball. I, I've always said this, a little college basketball and drinking followed by karaoke. Yeah. I sign me up every done. day for the rest of my life. Done, done. No did, problem there. j Riff, mm. did you get in trouble for soccer talk? No, 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 no. Okay. Wait, right. why? Oh, you know, Fletcher was right. You, we know nothing is sacred with you, Travis. If I say something in your ear, undoubtedly it goes over the air. Well, you know, you said you were getting texted, and then I, I was said concerned. I got distracted. Yeah, I got texted from Dar. I text from Darren. Okay. okay, we're texting back and forth. We're texting about wine. Okay. Oh, wine. Wait a second. Wait, wait a second. Wait a second. I, I don't, <laughs> I don't get it. I don't. You're, you're doing our show. You're busy. You're shopping jackets, <laughs> like sensible garden wear jackets yeah. for, uh, like garden attire. <laughs> Guarded attire for uh, uh, an engagement party, and then you're like, "Yeah, no big deal." And then you hijack our show to do a soccer update about the EPL, hijack. I'm required to do a halftime. I did a halftime. It's part of my obligation. <laughs> then and then you're like, you know what? Instead of paying attention to anything Big Rich TD of related, I'm going to chat with my midday host about wine selections. Wait, what? What wine? Wait, are you are you supposed to bring a bottle of wine to the garden attire party? No, 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 no. Well, I, I hope not because I'm not. But um, first of all, Rich, do you believe that I have provided value to the show today? You've done a pretty <laughs> impressive job considering all the while you've been planning your weekend. <laughs> I have something called attention deficit hyperactive disorder. Welcome to the, my world. Okay, but Ooh, because I provided you. value, I don't feel bad about any of this. Now, with, now let me answer Travis's question. Okay. Um, there is a, a wine connoisseur up in Napa Valley named Michael Jordan who is made famous Jesus you know, my, because... <laughs> <laughs> How is this happening? Is this sports diet? But it's a different. No, it's well, kind of. It's a different. Mike, it's wine connoisseur of all. It's time. a different Michael Jordan, and he's like he's like this small, right. like white Italian dude, and like he's like super famous, <laughs> and like his wines and his wines are like being like like appreciated okay. by NBA players, and the company that he like helps distribute for Darren's wife works for. Oh, so like there's a okay. huge so, wow. Well, yeah. What's crazy about this is so I'm down here in Dallas, Texas this week uh, visiting family. But while I've been here, I actually ran into uh, a different wine connoisseur named LeBron James. He's not. <laughs> he's he's not the basketball player either. He's a he's a t he's a tiny Italian man also who. I apparently now there's this scuttlebutt like who's the best connoisseur of wine is it Michael Jordan or LeBron James so while the Jordan James uh debate wa wages on in the sports world it actually does in the wine world as well wow. it's very strange okay. yeah a lot of, I, a lot of tie-ins there uh I'm hopefully they're working on a shoe deal for these wine connoisseurs <laughs> <laughs> like the I like the new pair of Jordans 
<laughs> who drinks wine out of a shoe? Um, well, listen, for the rest of the uh, proletariat, uh, you know, the working class who just sell their their labor for wage and a fair one at that, um, we're, we're going to represent that that group, that wide yeah. swath of America that me and TD speak to <laughs> while you're talking about your fancy European football and your wine and your garden attire, you what? sicko. Did you, uh, did you text back about your favorite cheeses or... Um, no, we're, we're strictly sticking to wine right now. Popovich, Greg Popovich had this great quote in this article that I sent you both. He said, all of my wines are older than Victor Wembenyama. Wow. Oh my God. Lord. That is, the, I am obsessed. The, yeah. <laughs> I mean, wow. This, this is, is, this is actually sports adjacent. Nicely done. Yeah. Nicely done. I provide yeah. value to this show. Wow. No, I'm not disagreeing with that. No, no, listen, you don't got to sing for your supper here. We enjoy what you yeah. bring to the table. No question about do we, it. Mm. Do we want to do a monologue real quick? Or do we want to go to yeah, break pro- and then come back and do a monologue? I, I think we we still need, yeah, we need time. Okay, <laughs> yeah. Time. So let's we do need, that. We need a quick break. Yeah. Let's, we'll, do a, we'll do a quick break. We'll come back. We'll get to our morning monologues because not only is it uh, National Burrito Day and some bro Mexican food is going to be dropping off some burritos here shortly, but also it is a therapy Thursday. And I got a text yesterday that I feel like, well, of course, you know, I read them on air, which I will again here. Our, uh, our own uh, iHeart News Radio 600 Kogo Lou Penrose texted me with a, with a question that I feel like we should all weigh in on. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So which we'll I answer, have not talked to you about this at all. I don't, at all. I don't know what's about to happen. Very interested to help out Lou on this Thursday, this therapy Thursday. Also want to mention to everybody out there, if you haven't already, uh, if you have no awareness of this and you're, you're hearing about it for the first time, uh, we have a great cause that we're, we're contributing to the San Diego giving back raffle. Okay, so it's an awesome way to give back to an important community resource uh, while also having a chance to win big. I mean, there are thousands of prizes. So you could support Ronald McDonald House. You could win multi-million dollar historic home right across the street from Balboa Park in San Diego. How about that? A multi-million dollar home. Or uh, you can gain any other of these prizes that they've put up. It's a true win-win for you and your family. And it also helps support an amazing organization. So Ronald McDonald houses keep families close to their hospitalized children. Uh, This is something that I've participated in and visited Ronald McDonald houses around the country during my NFL playing career. Uh, This one in particular in San Diego is located just 300 steps away from our local children's hospital. You know, the one I'm talking about and they provide overnight lodging, warm meals and many other programs and services to help support families in their time of medical crisis. You know, the forgotten are the siblings of the children in the hospitals and those children, those siblings of the children in the hospitals, like they need a place to live while their brother or sister is getting the support they need from the great specialists and uh, and the the doctors here in San Diego. And so they need to be housed somewhere. And the Ronald McDonald House provides not only that housing, but also meals, as we mentioned, and a place for their parents to work and entertainment for these kids. It's unbelievable. 2024 marks the 20th anniversary of the San Diego Giving Back Raffle benefiting Ronald McDonald House charities. Uh, this edition, it has more than 2,000 great prizes, including 20 vacations, 20 vehicle options, 20 days of $20,000 prizes this summer leading up to awarding the biggest prizes on July 25th of 2024. Uh, Every raffle supporter is guaranteed to win a prize and the grand prize drawing. uh, It's unbelievable. So the raffle fundraisers, they've helped throughout the years build San Diego uh, homes. And in return, the San Diego Ronald McDonald House has awarded more than $30 million in prizes to participants. So again, this is the first you're hearing about it. It's the San Diego Giving Back Raffle. Look them up. Participate this year. It's a great cause.
Welcome back. It's a Thursday, and our 2024 iHeart Music Awards was a hysteric, hysteric. Let's do this over again. <laughs> <laughs> it was hysterical. You should have been there. I laughed and laughed. Yeah, our 2024 iHeart Radio Music Awards was a historic night of music. You could stream the whole thing on Hulu right now, and we've delayed a couple of things. We have. Um, we've uh, we've delayed really talking about Fletch at all, who's fine. I promise you he'll be back soon. Uh, we all were on the group text yesterday. He's out of surgery. The, the leg performed well. Uh, he was requesting more drugs. We're not sure if he uh, if he got that request uh, uh, dealt with or handled the way to his liking. We'll see. Um, we'll have plenty of questions for him on Monday when he rejoins the show. Um, we also we've delayed the morning monologue and mm -hmm. we have a therapy Thursday. We got to help out Lou Penrose. Is there anything I'm missing? I feel like I'm missing a lot. Just a uh, a text message here from the 817, 817. Good morning, Big Rich, TD and Soccer Douche. Praying for Fletch to make a speedy recovery. That's in all caps. Wow. He's never coming back. Yeah. <laughs> wow. yeah. So, you know, people yeah. love it. People well, love I love it. how open-minded your listeners are to talking about new sports, guys. It's not a new. It's sport. new. Well, for mean, this like, show, it is. Seen it. We've seen it. Like, we watched it. Yeah, soccer. listen, we played it when we were five. Dude, yeah. yeah. I remember one time <laughs> on the front yard recently, um, I actually kicked a basketball around because I was too lazy to pick it up. And I was like, <laughs> oh, my God, I get it. I get it. This is fun. <laughs> I was like, can I just hang on a second? I got two fence posts over there. Can I try to get this in between? Kicked it over the fence, hit my wife's car. She was pissed. Yeah. Look, the point is, yeah. the point is, how wide are the goals in soccer, by the way? Yeah. What's that's the, right. what's are you trying? I see. I know what you're trying to do here. <laughs> yeah. Okay. No, no, no. But seriously, Jay Riff, like, I know a basketball hoop's 10 feet. Um, How tall is a, a soccer crossbar? Yeah. It's probably yeah. pretty close. Yeah. Yeah, oh, oh yeah. It, it's pretty close. Cool. Cool. As a soccer fan, yeah, you know. Wait, yeah, J Riff, like <laughs> J Riff, hang on a second. How you're how, Googling again? I'm not Googling not. again. I'm Riff, not. How far is the pitcher's mound from home plate? Do you remember that? Uh, is that uh how, how long how far is that? <laughs> Travis, you want to take this one? No, 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 no. I want I want you to go ahead and pick it I up. I know that third to home is 90 feet. Okay, so okay, third home is okay. not feet. All right, so just tell us, like, uh, how wide is a soccer goal? That's all. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> because, like, it's like, it's like, like 15. Huge, I think it's like 15 feet. You're a huge soccer nut. <laughs> <laughs> I hate you guys. <laughs> no, no, listen. Well, you, no, it's 24 so feet wide by 8 feet high. You are a That's true soccer pretty fan. Pretty close. You you were going 10 by 15. No, I said close to 10. I said just under 10. <laughs> you know, just like 150 square feet. It's like the size of a studio apartment here in San Diego, which I could give you one. I got a couple that I've been looking at, like $1,800 per month. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh God. see, you I were Googling. It. You you tried to act like you were no, Googling. No, Peter Salas put it on the uh, YouTube oh, comment. Thank you, Peter. Oh, there you go. Peter, thank no. you, Peter. Peter is an avid soccer fan. See, Unlike so you. So I bet you Peter appreciates that somebody's actually trying here on this show to speak to him. Do we want to try to sneak in a morning monologue? Is that yeah, even listen, possible? Le listen, le let me just throw this out on a therapy okay, Thursday here. I get a text it. message from Lou Penrose yesterday. Lou Penrose on vacation, by the way, in Puerto Vallarta. This oh, yeah. is what this is what I get. Question: Is it rude to use the stalls in a busy men's room beach bar if all the urinals are being used and you only have to pee? No, that's what, no. No, no it's okay. not rude at Thank all. Thank you. You do it yeah. at sporting venues, right? Apparently, he tried to go use the stall because urinals were full, stalls were open. He walked that way and got shut down. He got yelled at. And they said, no, 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 you can't use that unless you're going to be sitting down. Unless somebody is so physically intimidating that I have to listen to them. Like, unless somebody right. is literally towering right. over me, like, you're not going to pee in that can. I'm not <laughs> listening to them. There is no well, chance. Well, I had a couple questions here. One, how did they know that he was just going to be standing up? I mean, did they just call this out for no reason? Oh, and two, point. two, I mean, it's science here. You're not going to number one without number two. I mean, yeah. number two comes along with number one. I mean, well, no, no, you got it backwards. Uh, one, I'm sorry. No, well, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. You're, you're not well, getting number two without number one. That's what I meant to say. 
the train ain't leaving the station without the caboose. Right. I completely agree with what right. you're saying. Also, um, like, yeah, isn't it isn't it proper protocol to keep the line moving? Like, why do why do you want to have a backup when you don't have to have a backup? Also, 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 <laughs> Lou, if you're listening, and I hope you're on a therapy Thursday, you've done nothing wrong. Uh, this is the natural order of things. And what you ran into was the kid who didn't get enough cracks at being a hall monitor <laughs> in elementary school or middle school. And he's still wearing in his brain that orange sash. Like, those aren't the rules. The The stalls are for twosies. Yeah. Like, it, it's like, you know what? Listen, nerd. Uh we're on vacation in Tulum or whatever the the Valley of the Door, whatever Port of Vallarta means. I look. The point is, do, you don't have to listen. Bro, do you to even the, vacation? <laughs> what? <laughs> you, don't, you don't. You don't have to. You don't have to listen to this this bathroom geek who's got his. Like, I mean, this is this is like the cart narc on uh, on TikTok. Yeah. You ever see that guy? Yeah. Where if you leave your carriage outside yeah. of the uh, the cart, which I, I hate it. I hate it. I absolutely hate it. I can't oh, stand it. Are but, you a cart narc also? No, I hate the cart narc. Give me a break. <laughs> if you no, I'm sorry. Listen, if you <laughs> you pay people to go collect the carts, Dude, like why you, why do I have to take them to the cart corral? I mean, are, I will if it's close. You are killing jobs if <laughs> if you if you don't now listen to me. Now I'm a guy. Listen, I'm a guy who I will go out of my way to put a cart in the cart corral. And okay. It's not be, it's okay. Not because I'm a great guy. I, I just I, it's like I'm also the guy who's like on the ground picking up popcorn like after a movie. I feel embarrassed. It's, it's like that's the feeling I have. I'm like right, if somebody's right. watching me and they look oh, look at this slob in the aisle of the right. movie theater. Like it just completely doused the place with kernels. Like so I get embarrassed. But for anybody who leaves their cart near their car, I don't care because I think about it, this is employing at least two people at this Vons. Like it, it drives me crazy. So whoever this bathroom hall monitor who gave our very own Lou Penrose a problem while he was on vacation, he could go kick rocks. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's what I'm now. Hold on here. Two things. One, if I don't put my cart back in the cart corral, my cart is definitely secured and it's not rolling anywhere. I can guarantee you that because that would be my biggest pet peeve is if somebody's if somebody's cart hit my car, I'd lose my mind. Two, you got to make sure, though, if you are using the stall that it's cleaned up because if uh, you know what I'm saying, like the next guy who comes in, you're not going to want to sit down on any fluid. Yeah. 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 That makes sense. Yeah. yeah that so, you got to lift yeah, the seat. You, so, Maybe even dab it with a little, 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 you know, uh, just, just yeah. be just be uh just be nice about it you, we know what we should do uh before we get out of here is uh a 50 dollars gift card to islands i like that idea mm -hmm. i like that mm -hmm. idea a lot maybe uh maybe caller number five yeah i like it caller number five let's not do it right now let's give the let's give these uh streamers a chance here so let's do 858 858 on the money caller number five eight seven 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 six seven four seven sixty you are going to grab yourself a fifty dollar gift card to islands with a vast menu of items, a family-friendly beachy vibe atmosphere with delicious food and drinks, the cheesiest cheddar fries, the coldest beer in town. Visit Islands Fine Burgers and Drinks or just be calling number five in one minute and 10 seconds. I love it. I love it very much. Very, very much. I also love how I feel now that I've met uh, Dr. Roy David. Okay. He's a uh, double board certified plastic surgeon over at the man zone. He's the medical director there. He's a real doctor. So he also obviously owns golden triangle plastic surgery. You've heard me talk about Dr. Roy David many times. Um, but as the medical director at the man zone, his specialty there is taking care of men's health, which is a huge concern in this country that very few people talk about openly. And I think it's because there's a lot of shame around people who need testosterone treatment. And I get it like, because for some of the reasons it's a little embarrassing, right? You know, maybe you're not performing in the bedroom anymore the way you used to, but that's not the only problem. It's not limited to just that type of stuff. It's also how you feel on a daily basis. Like, you know, waking up in the morning, do you feel sluggish every day? Are you slamming coffee all the way up until like almost 5 p.m. because you just can't keep your eyes open? Are you getting good enough sleep? Are you building muscle still? Even though you're going to the gym all the time, you're not seeing the results you want. Are you even getting to the gym anymore because you're low energy? All these things can be associated with and oftentimes are the result of low testosterone. And by the way, guys, you're losing testosterone every day you're alive. I'm sorry to say it, but after you pass through puberty, you hit your mid-20s, you're on the downslope. So I go in and I meet Dr. Roy David for the first time. I'm 37. This is at the end of the year last year. 
And we sit him for a consultation and, and he goes, there's no way you're a candidate for testosterone treatment. I'm like, well, I talked to a buddy. He was getting testosterone treatment. They didn't think he'd be a candidate to turned out that they were wrong. He was right. He's on replacement therapy. I'd like to get your thoughts on this. Could I get tested here? And he does. He tests me. Find out that I'm in the low average range and I'm feeling some of the things I described. You know, just not feeling motivated to get to the gym. I got brain fog and I read up about it and testosterone treatment can help me and it did. So Dr. Roy David and his team at the Man Zone got me right. I'm on my testosterone replacement therapy over the past five months and I've never felt better. I feel like, I feel like me back in my 20s. It's incredible. I'm 38 now, but if you're a man in your 40s, your 50s, your 60s, you should get your testosterone checked every single year. There's no question about that. And you should start your journey on replacement therapy over at The Man Zone. You can check them out at themanzone.com. That's themanzone.com.
Uh, this update is presented by Summit Racing Equipment. The Padres dropped, or excuse me, they are two, two of three against the, in the series against the Cardinals while I'm distracted by burritos that are, I can't even eat. Um, but they won game three, which is important. A must-win game, according to our afternoon show. Three to two. Joe Musgrove had a great start. They have a day off today before heading up to the Bay Area to take on the Giants tomorrow. The NBA, the Lakers come home after a five and one road trip. That's pretty good because they're trying to get into the playoffs. Currently sitting as an eight seed in the tournament, only a game and a half back of the six seed. Alakai Flynn had 50 points last night for the Pistons. Summit Racing has the parts you need to keep your truck rolling right from custom grills to tonneau covers and everything in between. Shop summitracing.com. Use promo code radio for $10 off an order of $100 or more. Exclusions apply. Offer ends 4 14, 2024. Yeah. Happy Thursday to those who celebrate. Hash, happy National Burrito Day to you all. It's Big Red Stadium. Fletch with you, San Diego Sports 760. And we've just had a very special visit from the Burrito Ferry. His name is Javier. He is the owner-operator of Sombrero's Mexican Food. They cater to. <laughs> and they catered to us this morning. And when I say the burrito fairy, it's actually better than that. Because with the tooth fairy, you got to put something under the pillow mm-hmm. in order to wake up with a little coin, right? You got to you gotta lose a tooth. He asks for nothing. Mm-hmm. And he comes flapping in here with his wings of mm-hmm. gold and silver. Mm-hmm. And he drops us these delicious burritos and tortilla chips and packets of delicious salsas. Yeah. Oh my God. J Riff uh, he said, Hey, let me know if there's a vegan one in there. I just opened the first one up. It's a California burrito. I mean, it's yeah. carne asada, it's French fries, it's cheese, it's sour cream. And some bros now has their hot sauce in the like little packets, which that, is so that, nice that they pack yeah. it, they package themselves. So it's their hot sauce. It's so good. Can I just say, like, I have, I honestly probably would break it if there was no cheese in there. Because I am desperately worried that if I have any dairy, like I will die. Because it's been it's been three months. It's been three months. So like your body after six weeks, after six weeks, your body stops producing that enzyme. And so oh, if right. I if I end up having like actual like cheese, like I might die here on the board. Well, check this out. This. On a national yeah, burrito ahead. day, sombreros. Uh, you can get five dollar California burritos at all sombrero locations. How about that? Also, you can enter to win burritos for a year. All you got to do is sign up for sombrero rewards. Uh, just go to sombreromex.com for more, more, more details there. But man, five dollar California burritos, chips, and salsa today only. Woo-wee! Okay, well, listen to this. Um, we're gonna do that real soon. So if you're listening now, you're gonna win a $25. Uh, gift card, which by the way, by my math, uh, you could get five California burritos today yeah. at a at a Sombrero's Mexican food <laughs> yeah. to celebrate National Burrito Day. I think that's correct. Five times five is twenty five. Ipso facto, you're gonna feed a family of five with California burritos if you're the winner of the twenty five dollars Sombrero's Mexican food gift card. Uh, so congratulations ahead of time to whoever ends up getting their hands on that. Uh, we'll give you the time to call in in just a moment, but in honor of Sombrero's Mexican food, uh, just handing out this array mm-hmm, of delicious mm-hmm, burritos mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. on National Burrito Day. Oh, Lord. How about, how about we do this? How about, how about we share with our listeners, because of Sombrero's Mexican food, what hat our favorite Padres player remind us of? <laughs> so this delicious restaurant is named after a traditional Mexican hat. So... Therefore, I think it's only appropriate that we try to think of a. Okay, so how about this? I'll go first. I'll give you guys time to sort of marinate well, over this yeah, topic. Yeah, because we didn't talk about this. No, we didn't. <laughs> we didn't. I sprung this on the two of you, and I'm very sorry to do that. No, I like this it. Is as ridiculous. Okay. Let's talk about Kyle Higashioka. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Who okay. all of a sudden is my favorite Padre player. Right, right. So you say to me, you say, hey, Rich, like what hat does Kyle Higashioka remind you of? (laughs) And this is this is what Kyle Higashioka reminds me of, because, again, just to remind everybody, hits his first home run of his major league season this year. 
Uh, he's the 33-year-old backup catcher to the young star Campisano, who's on an absolute heater right now. Uh, Campy is having a great start to the season, but he's going to need rest days. And obviously they brought in uh, Higgy to be his his backup. And it's going well so far because um, the Cardinals had three hits. I believe it was in the fourth inning. It was. And Higashioka nailed both Brennan Donovan and Nolan Arenado trying to steal second base. So he was able to throw out two, two potential stolen bases at second. Um, and then he jumps on a 3-2 fastball in the middle of the zone and absolutely lifts it off to the second deck of the Western Metal Supply Co. building in left field, a three, or excuse me, a 400-foot uh, home run to help the Padres win. This was an offensive-defensive combo we haven't seen in the majors since 2000 when Benji Molina pulled it off in the second inning for the, for the Angels when they're on the road against Tampa Bay. So... This is the first time in 24 years a catcher has thrown out two and also has hit a home run in the same inning. Kyle Higashioka, to me, is the straw hat that you use when you're out in the garden. Yeah. You're not going to use it every day. No, you're not. But it's old reliable, right? He's 33, and when he decides to dust off the catcher's mid, he's going to go out there and do something special for you. You want to keep the sun off the back of your neck while you're pruning your basil? You call in Kyle Shiga, Kyle Higashioka. Okay, <laughs> if you need if you need the the straw hat to take a walk down to the beach with the kids because they're driving you crazy in the house, you call in Kyle Higashioka. So yeah. he is my straw hat. I like you it. guys have a favorite pod I like that it. you <laughs> that you want to uh, name after a hat. Let's you, try this. So you know what I'm looking at is uh, Joe Musgrove, right? Okay. Yesterday. We we need to see something to get right with Joe Musgrove. He had a had a bad couple outings, didn't look great. You we we had questions. Is Joe Musgrove the Joe Musgrove of old? What is going on? Well, you know what he did? He threw on the hard hat. He threw on the hard hat. He went out there and worked. Six like innings, gave up five hits, only gave up one run. He knows how to get down and dirty. And if if something's coming at him, <sighs> He'll put his head down. He'll put his head down. He'll let it just ricochet right off. Why? Because he's got on that hard hat. He's got on that hard hat. <laughs> he's not worried about nothing. So it just, it just seems like the workhorse out there yesterday. I like it. Jackson like Merrill. Farrell Merrill. Yeah. Are you going to say bucket hat? Is he kind of Gilligan? No, nah, he's a oh. Brixton hat. <laughs> oh, whoa. Brixton hat. A Brixton he is, hat. He, because Brixton, you know, they're very sturdy. They're very strong. I mean, we know Merrill Merrill is a very strong young man, right? Like, mm -hmm. he's got that young boy energy. Yeah. Now. <laughs> strong bull. Brixton. <laughs> young bull energy. Now, Brixton hats are also held in high regard, right? Because they're good to look at. But they get the job right. done. Right. Jackson Merrill, he's a beautiful man. <laughs> And he also gets the job done. And so, and, and I think that like, like Brixton's expensive, but like you can justify at some point, Jackson Merrill is going to earn himself a very nice contract, but every single person knows that he will be worthy of it. So to me, Jackson Merrill mm -hmm. is the Brixton hat that Travis is wearing on his head right now. I like it. I like it a lot. How about Dylan Cease? Does he, Dylan does he kind of give you like when it's just the mustache, does it give you top hat vibes? Yeah, 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 that's a good. That's the With like a little cane. Really, yeah, 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 yeah. He's got a monocle. Is is he a magician? <laughs> or not yeah. a magician? No, it, no, no, no. It's it's either that or a police officer's hat. Like he was like, <laughs> listen, the fuzz is here. The party's <laughs> over. This hit parade that's supposed to be scheduled for uh, Friday in 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 San Francisco. It comes to an end right now what? because Dylan Cease, officer at law, is on the mound. <laughs> and also, he's a stripper in the offseason. <laughs> Ladies love a man in uniform. I, th I thought, uh, uh, I don't even know if I could say that. Maybe I shouldn't. I'll, I'll save it. No, no, it's cool. It's cool. Yeah, I didn't yeah, say yeah. it. You don't even have to turn the dump. Just button. think, I'm just, I'm no, I'm just, just preparing. Well, I'm just, I no, didn't no, know no, if no. maybe if, like, you know, Fernando has a fireman's hat. Go ahead. Yeah. Because he's got yeah. a hose. <laughs> I don't. I mean, when he hits it. the ball. <laughs> no. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. How about like, lap. like one of the lap, about, Come on. How about, how I can't about, do a lap. Get like, ready for happy. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, we're about to. Okay, so 
if you're right. Your lap would take four minutes. <laughs> if anybody's confused why we're doing this, right? Um, it's in honor of sombreros, Mexican food. Okay, yeah. we are comparing Padres players to hats because uh, uh, for whatever reason they named their Mexican restaurant uh, sombreros, and we're damn glad they did. They also brought us in burritos. Um, we also have been eating burritos. It's National Burrito Day, so if you want to win that twenty-five dollar gift card mm-hmm. to Sombrero Mexican Food, where they are. They are selling California burritos for only $5 a pop today on National Burrito Day. Uh, you just wait. We'll tell you how to win that. Let's hit a halfie. And then also, we have some other giveaways coming up later in the show as well. We'll get to all that. But first, this. I see a bunch of guys playing with their technique and fundamentals. Time. All right, TD, what do you got for us? Well, we will start with our Padres. They win! They win yesterday. Now one in a row. It was a dominating performance over the surging red-hot Cardinals, putting an end to their winning streak. Padres victorious 3-2 to two over the Cardinals. Joe Musgrove looked good. Xander looked good out there. Uh, we talked about earlier, Suarez looked like like the closer they've been waiting on, things have been good there yesterday. Padres now sitting with a 3-4 and four record. They start a three-game series with the Giants tomorrow. First pitch there, 135. And some other baseball news. The Oakland A's, they said, hey, we don't like Oakland anymore. We're going to go to Vegas. And then about a month ago, Vegas was like, hey, we were just checking you guys out. And you know what? You should probably stay up in Oakland. And then Oakland said, nah, we don't really want to renew your lease. So now it looks like they're going to Sacramento, the Sacramento A's that confirmed as Jay yeah. Ref eats a chip. Yeah. So yeah. that that looks like that's happening there in the NFL. I think it's in uh, 2025, but yeah, it's happening, man. Interesting. Uh, in the NFL, big move yesterday. Stephon Diggs now a Texan. Uh, Bills, they're going to get a second round pick in 2025 and a fifth round pick in 2025, as well as a sixth round pick this year 2024 and in the a nba some scores around the league the lakers martha washington 125 120 portland <laughs> provided haven for an unusually large number of ships the hornets 89 86 uh in honor of what? thumbs down it's portland i mean <laughs> obviously obviously ships there uh, right. Jay Riff, uh, big tennis fan. This one's for you. Brooklyn Deckard, the Pacers, 115-111. Nice. Yeah, she's married to Andy Roddick, I believe. I want to say that's Roddick. right. Roddick, yeah, Andy Roddick, mm-hmm. yeah. The Hawks forcefully spit out saliva. The Pistons, 121-113. Boston, only lonely beastie I be all by myself without nobody. The sun is beating down on my baseball hat. The air is getting hot. The beer is getting flat. Looking for a girl. I ran into a guy. His name is MCA. I said, howdy. He said, hi. Paul revered the thunder. 135-100. The Grizzlies uncled the Bucks. 111-101. The Magic school bust. The Pelicans. 117-108. <laughs> and the Suns eclipsed the Cavs. Or at least they will on Monday. 122-101. So that one, that one hasn't played yet. You're now giving <laughs> scores for games that haven't. No, the eclipse, the eclipse happens Monday. <laughs> oh, it's due yeah. for Monday. Okay. Which by the way, I found out while I'm here in Dallas, Texas, that I'm actually leaving Dallas on Friday and I'm going to miss the solar eclipse, oh, which right. apparently in Texas, you're going to see a complete eclipse of the sun. That's right. Which, yeah. Yeah. It's a, about a 55% solar eclipse here in san diego we will have the best viewing angle in california being that's cool being low apparently though we won't see a difference unless we use a like a like a pee hole camera yeah you know what go grab uh i mean you can go get those glasses like at 7-eleven or grab a welder's helmet but they're saying like unless it's like 90 percent or like 80 percent cover like you really can't see anything no that's false that's what i was told I yesterday see. by an expert also i'm pretty certain you could stare directly into the sun without any eye protection and you'll be just fine um, you you will you will notice that the sun is it halfway covered i guarantee yeah. you that i guarantee Nobody's you will gonna, nobody's gonna tell me how to protect my <laughs> eyes i'm gonna use my ray-bans and stare skyward <laughs> See you Monday, and be I, I may put on my readers and up at a notch. <laughs> yeah, I want to get a closer look at this solar eclipse. Check me out. Cash me outside. Anyways, that's, we said our business. Yeah, that's yeah. right. And be that, up on game. That business is burritos. 
<laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, which, by the way, call right now. Or actually, don't call right now. I, I always do this. I always jump the gun. If you want those uh, that $25 Sombreros Mexican food gift card, you're going to want to call at exactly 10. Tw- nope. Nope. We're going back in time. 823. <laughs> That's right. 823. <laughs> 823 if you want to win that 877-767-4760 or 877-SORG-760 if it's easier on your touchstone phone to dial that number. Um, Okay, listen, plenty to get to. We barely covered the Padres game yesterday, but doesn't it feel Mm. a lot better on the other side of a win with a 4-5 and record as opposed to looking at a 3-6 and record heading back up to the Bay Area to face the Giants? I missed it. I missed it. I was doing business on this side. I, I don't know what you asked because we weren't sure if you said islands or sombreros on that last read. Oh, some, some some, sombreros. Sombreros. Yeah. Some $25 gift card to sombreros. And <laughs> you then, did say islands. I was just double checking. Okay. All right. Yeah, so yeah. then, so it is sombreros, oh, like, but I don't know what you asked. <laughs> you could go back and check the tape, J. You're just busy stuffing your face with tortillas. Wait, I'm supposed to be recording this? <laughs> <laughs> What the hell is going on with you? Know. We told you so many times this is a radio oh, show. Gosh. Now we're still watching tennis. Just weird. Yeah, that's good. Mm. Is um, Andy Roddick there? No, neither is Brooklyn Decker, which that's is true. a bummer. By the way, Magic School Bus was the best one. That was the best it one. Was. I think less is more with some of these. Not you didn't think of uh, some Beastie Boys. Paul Revere was good. Not my generation. <laughs> wow. Wow, wow, yeah. wow. Uh that's a critic. It's me sad. I I mean I rapped for you. Yeah. I was yeah, impressed by the Jerry. performance. Thank you. Thank um, you very much. I don't know what I you did asked. Love what did you song. ask? Oh, oh, I just said, okay, so Padres, three, two win. They snapped this insane Cardinals hot streak. Okay. Uh they they beat up on Mike Schilt's old team. Uh they they find their way to Providence before hitting the road. I mean The midday show, the Darren Smith show, called this a must win. For crying out loud, there was so much on the line here. And the Padres get the dub. And so now everything feels rosier, right? We're looking at a four and five record instead of a three and six record. We've got we've got Joe Musgrove looking like he's pitching, like he's ready for another NLCS bid. Uh Blake Snell, who? We got you Darvis pitching a gem a game ago. Mm. We got Joey Musgrove, Java Joe Mm. back on the mound looking like a stalwart. So nothing to worry about, right? All of a sudden we yeah. feel good about the pods. I mean, this roller coaster is heading up. So what I'm saying, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. It takes one game. Uh, actually, to be quite honest, no, I'm I'm still not confident. I still don't know how this is going to work out. I still am not feeling like the Padres are going to roll somewhere. And maybe they prove me wrong, but that's just it, right? We have been burned so bad last season that we now feel like you got to prove it to us, Padres. Uh, And we're hopeful. We're crossing our fingers. We want to see him go do well. But at the same time, man, they lose a couple in a row. And I I get down quick. All right. So let me ask this question. Say the Padres, they, they hit a little bit of a hot streak here, but they, you know, approaching mid-April, they lose a couple games in the row. And they finished their first 20 games, 10 and 10. I mean, are we are we really going to ride the roller coaster where we're we're up and down on a team that's 500? I just I just I, I understand the minute to minute reaction that people will have when they're watching an NFL season. Right. Because so many things are so crucial. Injuries, they can amount to significant losses throughout the year, uh, especially at key positions. But baseball is so different. It's played every day. You know, it's played over five months, 162 games. I, it, it's it, to me, it's maddening to take every single game so seriously. But I feel like what you just said is accurate. We don't trust the Padres. So we can't even trust that the way they looked yesterday with their backup catcher in and one of their better pitchers on the mound, that this is what it's going to look like this season. I, yeah. I think this is probably going to be what it looks like more than it is it actually. Well, I mean, I hope so. I hope that's the way it is. I, I don't have full confidence in that. And, and I don't know if a lot of people do. I mean, we, we try to find Padre positives when they're on the down. And then when they have a great game like yesterday, where, I mean, I think that was a solid performance overall. The, the Padre positives come a lot easier and it makes you feel a little better. It's just, whew, man, when when the Padres aren't clicking, you can really tell. 
I mean, you can really tell. And and that's where I think it gets difficult here as a Padre fan. Yeah. Yeah. Well, listen, it's going to be a long season but, if you're on the roller coaster that TD's on. Yeah, I'll which, which, which by the way, oh, without a doubt, without a doubt. But <laughs> by the way, we were talking about comparing the baseball season to a football season, and it takes about 10 games to equal one week of football, one game of football. So we're not even one game into the season here if we're looking yeah. at it like that. Yeah, and by, and by yeah. the way, if your if your team, if the if the Chiefs come out and lose week one, does that mean their season's over? No. So right now, if you were if you were comparing the major league baseball season to the NFL season, and we're not one game in, but they but the Padres go one weekend with a losing record. I'll the season's not over. Comparison. I'll give you a great comparison. <laughs> JRF does so, not like this comparison. I, well, but, but it's ridiculous because, it, okay, I'll give you a team that almost exactly exemplifies the past two seasons plus going into this next season like the Padres in the NFL. Philadelphia Eagles in the 2022 season have this incredible year. Jalen Hurts brings that team all the way to the Super Bowl. Nick Sirianni looks like one of the brightest young coaches in the league, right? So they have a Super Bowl run and they lose to the Chiefs. Jalen Hurts actually performed better than Patrick Mahomes in that Super Bowl. The next season, the Philadelphia Eagles go out there, and this is in 2023, last season, and they looked awful down the stretch, right? They right. they almost missed the playoffs, but they sneak in. They get beat in the first round by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So then you, you're looking into 2024 and saying, it's going to be a bounce back year. It has to be. They can't be worse. Well, the Padres are right there. That's the type of year that they had last year, and that's what the hope is for the Padres this year, that there's no way they could be that bad. And I understand the hesitance, but no Philadelphia Eagle fan is going to freak out if they tie the first game of the season, right? right. right. So if the Padres finish this 10-game stretch, 5-5, five and five, and say the Philadelphia Eagles start their season with a tie ball game against the Pittsburgh Steelers or whoever the hell they're going to face, like nobody's panicking in Philadelphia. Nobody should be panicking in San Diego. Is my point. <laughs> you are correct, uh, J. Riff. Again, uh, I will say it as we whispers in my ear. What I'm is never she, talking what is to she wearing on the screen. <laughs> uh, I I don't I can't remember her name here on ESPN. Wait, hang on. Turn the uh, camera. I gotta, okay. Yeah. Is it is it, is it is it Molly again? Is no, it's not it? not yeah. Molly. Uh, I I don't yeah. know the other host. But anyway, she looks like she's wearing a superhero outfit, and I'm here for it. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. no, that's nice. fine. Probably got to take a break. I didn't realize here. it was like Halloween yet. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa, easy, easy. Yeah. Come on. That's a <laughs> that's a lady. Yeah. Um. All right, guys. <laughs> um. We got to get back to the NFL. We're making plenty of Major League Baseball NFL connections here, but how about the connection that C.J. Stroud's going to make with Stefan Diggs this upcoming season as the Houston Texans trade for Stefan Diggs for picks? We'll get into that storyline and what's changed in the AFC. That's coming up next. Big Rich TD and Fletch, San Diego Sports 760.
shape-shifting trade, a headache heads to Houston. We cover it coming up next. This update, I'm sure Rich just said something funny to me, but I can't hear him. Uh, This update is presented by Fertilome. Natural products. Padres have the day off after going one and two against the Cardinals in the series up north to San Francisco after the day off today to take on the Giants tomorrow. Lakers come back home five and one from road trip. Still ninth in the Western Conference, but a game and a half out of the six spot trying to get into the playoffs and avoid the play-in. Malachi Flynn had 50 off the bench for the Pistons last night. Now green thumbs can be greener. Fertilome has all natural product lines, perfect for use around the home and garden. Fertilome natural products are perfect for organic gardening. gardening. Fertilome at your favorite independent nursery or garden center. Make your piece of the planet a healthier place to live. Big Rich, TD and Flash, San Diego Sports 760. Did I jump the gun there? Did you have something to play? Okay, good. Because what I want to do is tell you that we are going to be downtown San Diego this Monday, April 8th, 6 p.m. for the national championship. We're going to be hanging out at Whiskey Girl. We want you to join us right in the heart of the gas lamp, 702 Fifth Avenue, right on the corner of G Street. All kinds of food options, bucket and draft beer specials, as well as tequila specials. Sounds like it's going to be a party, and I think you need to be a part of it. So make sure you're down there this Monday, 6 o'clock, Whiskey Girl. Tons of prizes were given away, by the way, as well. Whiskey Girl's giving out prizes. We're giving out prizes all throughout the game. Then after the game, we're going to hang out and do a little pro karaoke, if you know what I'm saying. I mean, you've heard these pipes before right here on these airwaves. You know what I'm going to bring. Uh, Yeah, he's going to bring the house down (laughs) is what he's going to bring. That's and, right. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna be there like groupies stage side, just like <sighs> oh my god, yeah. Travis, I'm gonna throw my underwear, underwear at him. Ooh, thank God. <laughs> I won't. I'll just, it'll just like hit my face, and I'll just let it slide off on the floor. I won't even be phased because I'll be so in the zone singing Bon Jovi. <laughs> oh my God, I'm a big Bon Jovi. Okay, so what's your go to? I'm honestly, if there's overlap here, okay. <laughs> when you sing karaoke, what is your go to Bon Jovi song? I'm- Living on a prayer. No, 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 no. I would go either Blaze of Glory or Wanted, or wanted. Dead or Alive. It depends on, like, if somebody else did Wanted already. Oh, that's interesting. I went okay. to a high school yeah. with John Bon Jovi's niece. Wow. Taylor Bon Jovi. 
Oh wow, we, oh, okay. we met his kid. Yeah, yeah. Um, so at this point, uh, we know the whole family besides the actual guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah we've met everybody. Well, hopefully, it comes a whiskey girl. We were hoping Monday night. Um, <laughs> because so- all I know is this Romeo is bleeding. <laughs> oh wow! But you can't see what, his blood. Was that? Uh, <laughs> it was the? <laughs> I swear to you, these five words. I swear. Is that the one? That's that one. Always. Yeah. Always. 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 Yeah. I was like, why can't I think of the name of this song? <laughs> oh, I dude, and I'm telling you right now, if 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 the pipes are warmed up, I can make. I can make the sky cry yes. with uh, my rendition of always. So I'm going um, to tell might be you going back to back Bon Jovi. You, you know it what warms be... up the pipes? What's Beer that? specials and tequila specials. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Right it does. Yeah. yeah. yeah I'm also, so I just, uh, I was just over in the, uh, the FM studio, the 101.5 FM studio. And we were talking about national burrito day and they're sure. like, did you get a burrito? And I said, Oh yeah, yeah. We cracked them open. Uh, the last segment I was eating them and she goes on the air. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's interesting. I'm like, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know what, what do you, what do you smoke? A uh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. little bit of a different mm-hmm. show over here. Mm-hmm. Listen, this um, they works. could do it their way. And by the way, <laughs> all I can tell you is if we're eating burritos on the air this week, it means either next week or next month, they'll be eating burritos <laughs> on their show because that's how it works around here. Um, Big Rich TD and Fletch. Fletch is out. He just had surgery yesterday. Um, all the well wishes pointed toward Fletch. We appreciate. It. We pass them along to him. He says thanks. He says I need more drugs. That's the message That's right. that he sent loud and clear yeah. yesterday. Yeah. So, so yeah. So, it, so if, if you have any, send them to Fletch. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, narcotics mostly. Just send them to uh, Fletch <laughs> at Fletch.com. Uh, that's his email. <laughs> No, listen, uh, Fletch is doing great. He'll be back Monday. J Riff is going to join us for the 8 o'clock hour for our Bar Car Friday tomorrow. Uh, he is committed to jump in the seat for us and engineer the final hour of the show yesterday. Other than that, we're down to two people tomorrow. So yeah. looking forward to just rocking out with TD for a couple hours. <laughs> um, so Stefan Diggs goes to the Houston Texans in trade yesterday from the Buffalo Bills. And the way I described it in the tease for this segment, TD, is a headache heads to Houston. So (laughs) this guy, look, he's a great receiver, but he turns 31 in the 2024 football season. He's been a problem for two organizations at the end of his tenure with those organizations, both for the Vikings and the Bills, namely with the Bills in the offseason training activities portion. uh, He he didn't show up or got sent home or there was all these issues and Sean McDermott and the bills, they kind of buried it. Josh Allen carried water for Stefan Diggs. He was like, no, everything's fine. Nothing to see here. And then the season ends. And I think it was kind of like the bills have a choice to make. They either stick it out with Stefan Diggs and continue dealing with all of this, or they move on from him and he could be somebody else's problem at the end of his career. Do you think this is going to be good for Houston or is this going to go bad for Houston? Well, I think it depends on uh, on how well things go out there as far as the win column goes. In fact, it may not even be about wins because the Houston Texans could rack up wins. They could win the division. They could uh, whatever it may be. If Stefan Diggs isn't getting fed the ball, He's not going to be happy. We've seen this before. So, I mean, I do believe that CJ Stroud is going to feed him the ball because he's arguably their best weapon on the team there. So the other thing that may happen, though, is, and it's happened in Buffalo, he becomes a bit of a decoy. You know, you're going to have to double team the guy. You're going to have to look his way if you're the defense because that's where they're going to want to feed the ball first. So, you know, it could go either way, I guess, in my eyes. I'm interested to see if, Josh Allen and the Bills speak out a little bit here over the next coming weeks or maybe even the start of the season. Uh, and it may not happen unless Stefan Diggs says something. You know, there's some tweet that goes out of like, thank God I'm out of Buffalo. Uh, happy to be where I'm at, wherever it is. Um, I- I'm just interested to see if we start to actually hear that, oh, these fissures were always there and they were carrying water the whole time. Because, yeah, that's what my gut says. That's what I believe. But interested to see if we hear it. From 2018 on, Stefan Diggs has not had a single season where he's caught for less than 1,000 yards. From 2018 on, he hasn't had, or excuse me, from 2019 on, he hasn't had a single season where he's been targeted less than 160 times. Good Lord. So, look, his catch rate is exceptional. 
obviously he's scored a lot of touchdowns over the course of his career, nearly 70 over the course of his time in the NFL. But there's a problem with Stefan Diggs. And it, it's the only problem really with Stefan Diggs is when he's not getting fed enough, he throws a hissy fit. So there was this down period. It was in November of last season where he wasn't getting as many targets. He wasn't getting as many catches. They lose back-to-back games on the road at Cincinnati and then home against Denver. And then he's he's like complaining about it. And all of a sudden, the Bills recommit themselves. They fire their offensive coordinator and they start targeting him massive numbers of times. And, and it starts to shift for them and, and it starts working for them. Down the latter half of the season, as a matter of fact, they slowed down on targets, but they won more ball games because Josh Allen was playing better. And like you said, he was being used more as a decoy. Now, look, I have no problem with Diggs in Houston. I think maybe a change of scenery could do him some good. But if he brings the same attitude he finished his tenure with the Bills with, I mean, this could be a problem for a young quarterback. Remember, C.J. Stroud is only in year two. You bring in a 31-year-old receiver with a lot of hype and a lot of attention, a lot of desire to get the football in his hands. If things start going wrong for him, does this ruin the locker room vibe that they have in Houston? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I mean, if it does, um, that's that's real bad. I mean, because as as everything looks so great right now on the outside, if, uh, if things start to get eroded within, that's uh, too bad out there in Texas. And you would hope that they could cut bait somehow and get out of it. But, um, you know, I don't know. I, my question is, is CJ Stroud, Josh Allen level, because does it take Josh Allen level? You know, I'm mean, Josh Allen has a cannon, a howitzer for an arm. So, yeah, I mean, does CJ Stroud have that same arm strength where you can get uh, Stefan Diggs down the, down the field and stretch this offense out a little bit? I mean, CJ Stroud who had a fantastic year, there were some times earlier on in the season, though, where he was a little bit inaccurate, maybe some overthrows there. Uh, and I, I just, I'm just wondering if we're going to see the same thing. I, I have a lot of confidence in CJ Stroud. I was blown away last year of how well he played. I just don't know if it's Josh Allen level. Josh Allen's on another planet for me right now. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, jo- Josh Allen finished the season strong, but there were some warts on the resume last year. Early, I mean, early, true. Yeah. There, there, there were. And, and it kind of felt like, he got the Bills into trouble at times, and then at the end of the season, he kind of bailed them out. Now more of the pressure is going to be on him looking at the Bills. And then, yeah, you look at the Houston Texans, you want to see further development with Stroud in year two because if he plateaus, well, that's fine because he had a great season. But if he regresses, that's going to be a struggle, especially for a receiver like Stefan Diggs, who's looking for greener pastures elsewhere. By the um, way, okay, by the way, I was just saying yeah, on, ahead, on the Bills ahead. side, if you're putting more on Josh Allen, a guy who already turns over the ball a lot because there's yeah. a lot of things being forced, if you're throwing more weight on him, what does that turnover issue look like? Yeah, it could get worse. It absolutely could get worse. I, I don't see how it gets much better, but we'll see. We'll see how good he is. We'll see how good Sean McDermott is as a head coach. All right, coming up next, we got bottom of the barrel. We're going to wrap up this show with that social distortion giveaway. We still have those tickets for you. All that coming up next. But first, I want to talk to everybody. Uh, well, I should say all of the men in our listening audience about their testosterone. And frankly, the the women too, especially if you're married to a husband who has some of these symptoms I'm about to lay out for you. Uh, if you have low energy or your husband or maybe a friend of yours, uh, low energy or brain fog or, you know, just a hard time getting to the gym or, I mean, there could be bedroom problems. I mean, that stuff isn't talked about a lot, but if it is an issue in your relationship or in your life, it's time to talk to the fine folks over at the man zone. So the is where you could book your first appointment um, the man zone is made by Dr. Uh, Roy David. Uh, he's golden triangle plastic surgeries, double board certified plastic surgeon. He's the medical director at the man zone and he can get you right. So men, every single year they're alive after the age of 30, they lose testosterone. It's clinically proven. You're just on a down slope. And as you lose testosterone, you could leave the ranges of average testosterone, which could have huge impacts on your health and your life. If you're experiencing any of the symptoms I just put out there for you, don't be ashamed. 
Don't be afraid. Go get tested today over at The Man Zone. Again, it's themanzone.com. You could set up your free consultation and your first appointment. They'll see if you're on the low range of testosterone, and they can get you treated, and they can get you right. Uh, you can check them out again at themanzone.com. That's themanzone.com.
a Thursday. Happy Thursday to those who celebrate. Um, we're wrapping up this one with bottom of the barrel as we always do. What are you giggling about now? What are you giggling Okay, about? hold on. Yeah. I was over here enjoying my sombrero burrito that you can go pick That's up right. today for five bucks. A California burrito. You get a California burrito chips and salsa for five dollars on National Burrito Day at every sombrero Mexican food. Meanwhile, riders are coming back. I get a a question from J Ref. Do we have a tape measure or a ruler? And I said, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, uh, well, first I said something very crude. First, did, yes, I yeah, have yeah. I have a 12 inch ruler. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, yeah. and then I said, yeah, we have, we, uh, we, yeah. Flesh <laughs> we have we yeah, we have a tape measure. And I said, what what's up? I want to measure my wrist. I'm going to try to order a gold chain. You know, I, I didn't I didn't properly make fun of J-Riff when he brought that up earlier. Like, what, what are you, Tony Soprano? Like, what, what what the hell is the matter with you? you what do you so mean? Much, You've been You're shopping so... the whole show, by the no, way. No, 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 no. This was this was like a quick thought that I had. You had to buy a toaster for a wedding. I did not have to buy a and toaster. Then, and then you needed a jacket, so you bought a shirt jacket. And then now a, you need a, a jerk, gold a chain. Jerk. A jerk. Yeah. A jerk. A jerk. Hey, what is it? What are you? What are you gonna buy a gold gold chain for your your, your bracelet? You're gonna get a, a pinky ring next? You think because you wear a pinky ring, you're the don all of a sudden? No, nah, no rings, no rings. Wow, what you going? No rings. Yeah. I would like just a a gold a gold bracelet and like maybe like a thin gold chain around my neck. <clears throat> you know, I <laughs> you get one of those chains know, that's like uh, has cursive is, writing. You can you can have like Jenna is around this, your neck. Is this proper garden attire yeah I mean, are we are you still wait, are we still no this is wait. for like just life in general are you gonna wear a shirt with your jerk no you're just gonna be shirtless yeah well you're gonna leave it unbuttoned of course you're gonna wear a jacket with nothing <laughs> under it this is what you're good i don't think this is garden attire what are you, well like, i guess you're... under it you're gonna have your gold chain precisely well, yeah. Okay, uh, let me ask a. Are you Nick Lachey? Are you a Backstreet Boy? Like, what the hell is the matter? You know that my uh, my brother named my fraternity was Lance Bass. <laughs> okay, well, that, I mean, you're you're not far uh, off, buddy. I mean, it's like, I mean, I'm gonna. Sh- you're gonna I know show exactly what Travis is thinking. Right no, now. you're gonna show up. You're gonna show up to a garden party, uh, engagement party, wearing. No shirt, a jacket, a gold <laughs> bracelet, a thin gold chain around your neck, holding a toaster. I mean, you're one microphone no away from singing in the mall with a bunch of other preteens. I don't well, understand. You could, you could probably get away with saying you were in 98 degrees because, I mean, no one really knows other than Nick Lachey. Right. Yeah. Cell point. You could be saying, really I was just cell trying cell. to bring it back, bring the late 90s back. You're doing Tomorrow it well. Is, uh, is a bar cart Friday. Thank I'm God. Brought to you by Keg and Bottle. <laughs> Keg and Bottle.com being utilized here as we're shipping booze to Rich out in Dallas. And it works. Did we lose you, Rich? Shipment today <laughs> from uh, Keg and Bottle.com because <laughs> Travis Dale has placed another one. <laughs> Um, all right, so check this out. 877-767-4760. Call at exactly 1056. Or, you're gonna win or those... 856. Shoot. 1056 856. Central Time. Or 1156 if you're on the East Coast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So confusing. Just, at least I'm the so number's good. easy. And in, and in Hawaii, it's 656. <laughs> Social distortion and bad religion. Those tickets are yours if you're caller number five. Call that number at whatever time Travis just said. I don't know. 856. 856. Uh, thank you to everyone. Thank you to J-Riff for sitting in making this happen, buddy. Uh, thank you to Sombrero Mexican Food dropping off some burritos. Head on over there. Get your $5 California burrito all day long today on a National Burrito Day. Thank you, Richie. Thank you, hangers, bangers, roadies, dogs, textures, everybody. We'll, we'll see you tomorrow. do it again tomorrow. Yeah. The Herd's next. Bar Car Friday again tomorrow morning. We'll see you there.